also listen, if you're looking to make a website for any old thing going on in your head, then look no further than Squarespace because they will make it incredibly easy to make your website and make it look fantastic. All right. Plus, if you need any help, they've got 24-7 award-winning customer support service. That means any old time of the day, if you need some assistance, some questions can be answered. So go to squarespace.com slash read so you can have a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can use the offer code READ to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or a domain. So go make a cool website and tell us all about it. Let's move on. Hey, y'all, this episode is also brought to you by Allbirds. Allbirds are the perfect shoes to express your personal style to the fullest. That's because their simplicity stands out in a good way. There are no logos to distract from the rest of your look, just very clean lines and subtle detailing. Plus, their range of colors can follow however you're feeling. You can be as subtle or as bold as you want to. I actually have my Allbirds on right now. So do. And I have to say, I feel like I run a tech company. They're very comfortable. Like I could very keno. be at one of those like standing desks for a very very long time having meetings and being on the phone like. a teddy talk <laughs> and they're cute as well you can get your own all boys all boys i wish all birds are the perfect <laughs> shoes for any style again get your own pair at allbirds.com very cute and very comfy all right let's start the show Me item drive me no care. Okay. Me take it anytime, anywhere. And I just square, so me no fear. And as a woman, I will be dear. Me want a girl who can wine by me. Me want a girl who can take care of me. Make me, me feel it. Make mm. me, me feel it. Oh, me I feel really squeeze it. Girl, me want to feel, oh yeah. Put me arms right around ya Yeah, you give me the tightest Who me ever get in my life Yeah, me just want to squeeze ya Put me things all around ya you Yeah, know you give me the You don't know this song by Egyptian It was a huge song In Jamaica? In the States as well Nicki Minaj did a remix to it What R. is the song called? Uh, Hold Ya Hold Ya? Hold You Hold You By Egyptian Like Egyptian with no E Egyptian? Yep. Well, I'll be there. Yo, Egyptian. Tell them Figuan eviction. <laughs> this one, yeah, it does it not get Oh, destroyed. no. I definitely thought you pulled that, like, from your childhood or something. <laughs> no, it's a big old song. <laughs> oh, I'll be damned. This sure is. It was like a, uh, I feel like it took control of a whole summer a couple years ago, but. It peaked at number 77, but all right. <laughs> Absolutely didn't have to do that. You decided I'm to. sorry. Nope. I wasn't trying to be shady. Like, I'm sure this artist is very good. Well, welcome back, guys. I am mm -hmm. Carl Winslow. <laughs> Iconic TV dad. Absolutely. I am um, Celeste. I, I am Celeste Beatty. This is the read. It is. And if you don't know who Celeste is, like I didn't before today, she is the first black woman to own a brewery brewery yeah, a, in this that's country a, a tough one yeah <laughs> which is wild again that this is, there can still be a first but yes the first brewery in the u.s to be owned by a black woman that lady is celeste Beatty. it is called harlem brewing company because of course she's a harlem knight and uh yeah that's harlem knight harlem harlem i think they call themselves harlem knights that was harlemite oh it might be Either way. I might just be saying the name of the movie. Both classic things. Anyway, yeah. shout out to you, Celeste. Well, there you go. Black There's excellence. My black excellence. Also, yes, I think that's a fantastic way to kick that off. Great. Um, and also, in addition to that, is a, a one Champelle, uh, Champelle Anderson of North St. Louis. She made the news recently because she has taken it upon herself to be at home making 100 lunches oh, okay. for kids in her neighborhood. Wow. Any old kid that may be hungry, needs some food, literally may hop off the bus <laughs> or before they get on the bus oh, and man. knock on this lady's door. She's got a sign outside, uh, Champs Teardrops, where you can get free snacks, lunches. Um, it says, 
the times here Monday through Friday, so be reasonable. Okay, <laughs> okay. Right. do not come here so that you know <laughs> Saturday night. Yeah, and she packs a uh, hundred lunches a day. She's talking about she's probably gonna have to go maybe up to one hundred and fifty. She said wow. in this news interview, and she just does this out of the kindness of her goddamn heart. Parents come to the house with the kids, pick up lunches for them, and she just knows that the kids be hungry. Sometimes people don't have wow. you know the resources, the means, or the time yeah. to be packing their kids um, lunches or making their kids lunches and stuff like that so this lady on the heart that god gave her wow and i said to myself black women Mm -hmm. like my word keeping the community for the grief (laughs) that the world gives them still just here wow feeding your damn kids and has six kids of her own that is just so and jelly sandwiches cookies fruit vegetables juice every now and then she might throw an extra special uh snack in there for her special babies as she calls them listen i already found her gofundme yeah i'm I'm giving it to her (gasps) she has raised thirty one thousand dollars. look at god i'm gonna put the link to the gofundme in the uh in the description that is so good this week so you guys can get up on the internet if you want to donate and things like that because that is definitely needed but i just thought that that was excellent because she could be like many of the rest of us and be like well mind her own business yeah good luck to you i I got enough problems of my own right but like when you see hungry children (laughs) i imagine like i know how i am and i don't have no kids and i would be like desperately running around i would take them to the bodega be like get whatever you want Mm -hmm. so I can just understand, like, seeing hungry-ass kids get off the school bus and being like, I cannot let them babies, you know, be starving. So, shout out to this woman, Miss Green. You're everything. Anderson. Uh, oh, okay. Well, it says Champelle Green, but then it says Champelle Anderson. Maybe it's Champelle Anderson Green. It, um, either way, she's getting my money right now. So, so this week, you know what you love it or you hate it? It's our pop culture segment that is called oh, Lord. Hot Bottoms and the Emmy nominated film When They Top Us. <laughs> what? <laughs> when the bottoms top us? No. When they top us. Okay. When they top us. All right. Whoever I, identifies is yeah. what they identify. Okay. That, ain't that what? We cannot figure out this new mic situation. Yeah. All right. So here we are. We're struggling. Back again. Okay. With some news for you. Let's see how it goes. First and foremost, a big show of 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 love and of relations this past week. <laughs> okay. From Kelani and rapper YG. Um they have apparently secretly been doing the bump and grind <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Um, Yeah, they've allegedly been dating for months, according to TMZ, which honestly should stand for, like, truth, maybe zero. I don't know. (laughs) The mess zone. Right. That perfect. (laughs) That's exactly what they do. Um, But yeah, they had uh, stepped out for New York Fashion Week together. It's a a symbol of their uh, union of love. And um, oh, okay. I wish them the best. Lots of people are excited about this. Other people, I guess, had questions since both YG and Kelani very recently both had kids. I believe Kelani gave birth to a very beautiful child in March. And YG oh. had a baby in July. Oh, wow. So, yeah, very recently. Right. So, apparently, for your black ass <laughs> man, <laughs> okay. YG and his daughter's mama were separated before his relationship with Kalani. And Kalani and the nigga that she had a baby with were apparently never in a romantic relationship. Because, you know, he's I think I heard that same thing. You know, they're queer. It was something like, you know, we just made this love baby. Something like that. Which I'd love. Gold. (laughs) Yes, it really is. Like, I'm not really, we're romantically, we're not linked. We don't have a romantic relationship. (laughs) But we vibe. (laughs) And we respect each other. Yes. And I believe you would be a good parent. You believe I would be a good parent. Let's just have this kid. I feel like that's leaps and bounds better than the rest of you motherfuckers that co-parenting anyway but you <laughs> hate one another's fiery right. fucking guts co-parenting <laughs> at the bare damn minimum so yeah i mean good for good for them i guess the only thing i know about yg is that 
utterly ignorant comment he made at Nipsey Hussle's funeral. So, Oh, yeah, I didn't hear about that. Right. I mean, I didn't hear it, but you told me about it. Right. So I was just like, once somebody told me who he was, because I could not recognize him. I mean, and you know. When I hear YG's music, it makes me do a dance that I'm not going to do because the listeners can't see it. Okay. Maybe for the show. I will repeat it so you can see. Mm. But it's like this. Oh, the Cali dance? It's a very Cali <laughs> dance. And I feel like someone will post a gift and I'll just tell you that one. Because you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the but one anyways, Snoop does all the time. Pac used to do it a lot. Oh, yeah, Snoop yes. does it all the time, too. LA niggas do it. Keenan Daquan Ray Jackson. The blackest name I have heard in a while. I love it. Where I'm did he get YG from? I would. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to Google that and I forgot. Uh, it stands for Young Gangster. <laughs> Join the Bloods at age 16. <laughs> this boy was born in 1990, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Woo! All right. Of course. Of course it is. It stands <laughs> for Young Gangster. It does. I don't know why I didn't just assume that. Wow. Yeah. Well, anyway, they look cute together. Of course, Kehlani looks amazing in red, so that's a perfect union. Yeah. And God bless the both of them, and they look super cute. I like, you know, the whole um, let's step out in our in our finest outfit and and un- unveil our relationship yeah. thing that um, Young Jeezy and not Brenda Song do. <laughs> Man, you niggas was acting the fucking shit. Shelby Wood was just minding her fucking business. Just minding her business. London Tipton or whatever the fuck else she used to play on the Disney Channel. That's just right. minding her business. And here you go, trying to get like shit on a racist right. by being racist. And in the process, confusing people who are like, wait a minute. What the fuck did London do? See, y'all play too damn much. Anyway, yeah, I think it's super cute that motherfuckers are out here in, in feather boas and... and and, you know, pointy shoes and stuff to be like, we go together. I think that's adorable. <laughs> Although goals for me would be like, like in a car at fucking Sonic. Okay. Drinking like one of those blue drinks. Yeah, whatever you want to. And that would be the post that you're never going to get because my shit is <laughs> Right. But in my mind. I don't see mind, myself doing anything like this, but you know, if Kalani's happy, then I'm happy for her because she's had a rough time of it. And she has? Well, she has. I'm not saying she has it. I I'm don't not know. saying like, oh, she's had like a rough, hard life or whatever. But you know, she's had her ups and downs with, I think, struggling with mental illness and then like dealing with niggas on the internet and all that kind of. <gasps> oh thing. my God, you're so right. Right. So you know, if she's happy, I forgot all about that shit. If she's happy, then I'm happy for her. That's great. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I and mean, she's one of the few people who has a tattoo on their face that I think is cute. Okay, because every time I see Gucci, I'd be like. <laughs> Are we still... So a triple <laughs> scoop. <laughs> you went for th- three scoops, you went huh? for three sc- The first time I saw Gucci in person was at Lennox, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Where everyone sees Gucci first. And the first. first thing I saw was the ice cream go. I was just like, it's it's real. I feel like you've told me this story <laughs> yeah. before. Because I was with Indy and really I think Asante Indy was like, hey, Gucci. And right. I was just like, what's up? Like, a very normal thing to just be at... Linux with an ice cream cone <laughs> with, with an ice cream cone on your face yes so okay that's that's lovely for them cute for you guys and um I'll be over here single <laughs> <laughs> um Robin Rihanna Fenty had a, her um Savage Fenty fashion show I believe last night um mm-hmm. it looked spectacular the models look fantastic the pieces look adorable um and rihanna is uh a machine she really is an executive so gorgeous and a bad bitch it don't make no top tier bad bitch icon um so savage fenty is apparently available on amazon now and i'm literally currently looking oh, at the like full page like they gave mama her own of course you know she's got a header she's got a category bar here new arrivals but they're all separated and things and like i can't wait i just want for one of you guys because i know this is going to happen to somebody one of you is going to get pregnant uh because of these draws right and i want to know if you have when it happens you know (laughs) for those of you who are actually happy about it and excited i want for you to be like 
it was me, guys. Like, <laughs> wore the Savage Fenty. Ooh, now, wee. I'm having a roti. I don't know why I said that. Like, some <laughs> things, I just they just come out. Anyways. Some of this stuff is really cute. Wow. Yeah, this like, millennial pink tiger print, bitch, I want that. Do you see here, Mama here who has the panties, but then they, she has, like, this, the long sleeve glove. Oh, yeah. Just, here, you know, that in match. case you just wanted to fuck it up Like, do quick. they come with the panties? I, n- I'm sure they don't. Can you purchase the art? You have to be able to purchase the Oh, come the on, armies. regular and curvy fit and of course every oh, every size in this bra is sold out except mine look at God <laughs> add to cart horse prime okay <laughs> free two day hello I'm getting it um, wow she goes up to a 46 triple D I don't know what that means I'm, ass- I'm assuming that's it's pretty, a big tip. it's <laughs> It, that's that's pretty high up. It's not as obviously as high as you could go, but oh, it's yeah. pretty high up there for um, a fashion brand. So I'll never forget the first time I heard somebody say that their bra size was like a letter past D. Yeah, and I remember thinking, "What? <laughs> like yeah. you can't." I have known people who had like breast reductions at a young age, mm-hmm. like high school, college, because their backs were like Just about to them. give out yeah. on them. Yes, as children. It was like, God damn. Let me hurry up and buy this photo hose, find <laughs> out, and add it to they cards. Cause bitch, oh, this is so cute. Well, congratulations on that. I just really wanted to um put a bat signal out there for you guys because I'm very curious as to who was going I know that somebody's about to wear these draws and put on skin by Rihanna and <laughs> yes and film it for Instagram and kids so I just want to <laughs> that's know right it all of it um so also apparently um Universal Music France held their open session which is apparently some sort of annual music seminar for the label or whatever in Paris and out of that, we got a whole bunch of French tweets that, uh, with Google Translate, tell us that a new Rihanna album is due out in December. Oh, okay. Now, most of you may know that Rihanna has been ever bothered about the release of her, or lack thereof, of her um, latest supposedly <laughs> reggae-influenced album. Leave that girl alone. She tired of talking to y'all about it. She's going to be done when she's done. Um, but she hasn't given a date. She hasn't alluded to a date. Right. She hasn't alluded to a time of year. Y'all have alluded done to this. a year. <laughs> you know? So I don't know who said what to who or what or whatever. But the rumor, according to this, is December. And I feel like even if that was true, just because of this, Rihanna sent the text. Yep. Like, no, nope, push it back. Delete just because of this, <laughs> February. I can't believe y'all have not learned to leave this girl alone about this album and when it's coming out. If it's coming out. Like, she is literally doing everything she can to expand her empire and become an even richer bitch than she already is. And y'all keep coming around asking her about a goddamn album. Like, let her set foundations and shit. Like, first of all, the thing that blows me about this, or doesn't really blow me, but it's like... I remember when Rihanna was releasing two albums a year. Yeah. And everybody was like, damn, can she slow down? Can like, she go girl, away? I just heard this song. <laughs> and now you got a whole new lead single for a new album. Rihanna was dropping them back to back. Burning allegedly, that Yeah, to get through that contract <laughs> or whatever. And now Mama's like, look, she I have done. a million uh, pieces moving. I have billionaire peen. <laughs> and y'all are bothering me about, about like my 20th album. Like, I don't... <clears throat> Let me just right. do what I want to do for a second and make sure everything's right. From what she has said about this album, she sounds very excited about it yeah. and just particular and like when it's ready, it's ready. But I, again, would not be surprised if it was due in December and because of this, Mama was like, you know what? No. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Like, that's the, that's the type of petty shit I would do, actually. Same. Like, so y'all really not going to leave me alone? Huh? You know I would. Hmm. Hmm. I got something for y'all asses. I'd immediately call Alec... <laughs> Cancel it. <laughs> Push it. No, I don't care. The answer is February. Not until they understand I'm not playing with them. Leave me alone about the goddamn music. In fact, make sure it's after the Super Bowl so nobody even call me about that. <laughs> so, Ooh, Did you hear J-Lo might be doing the Super Bowl? I heard that she some said show? that something like, sh- it, like she can't say she wouldn't love it or something like that, which I'm not like, girl, d- d- whatever. Do you? <laughs> I'm not about to witch hunt your motherfucking ass if you want to go and perform at the Super Bowl. I'm not going to watch it. Yeah, that's true. I'm not. I, well... You going to watch it because you have your Because I'm watching, right. Because yeah. I'm watching the, the you game anyway. You have a very anyway. petty celebration. And my thing is, like, Jennifer Lopez 
can dance. And she looks good. Jennifer Lopez puts on a great show, and I feel like Jennifer Lopez... <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but like it was just that Motown tribute that I was like, "Why are you here?" If Jennifer Lopez, <laughs> if Jennifer Lopez didn't, if Jennifer Lopez was offered a Super Bowl performance, I wouldn't fault her for turning it down. Yeah, or for taking it. Yeah, for I wouldn't. I wouldn't be pissed at her for taking it. I'm yeah. not going to watch it anyway. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be surprised or oh, how could you for doing it and stuff like that. And of course, like she. I wouldn't be surprised if she would desperately want to yeah. perform at the fucking Super Bowl yeah. and go for it. Plus, it's big. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But Every artist sees like their stream numbers go way, way up afterwards. At the same time, I know you know what time it is. And I know you know that what, what's going on. And you doing it anyway <laughs> would be you right. doing it anyway. Right. So you got to kind of let the pieces fall where they may. Mm-hmm. But I personally, personally Well, you know, now that Jay-Z's gonna... in charge of it, it's okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being incredibly facetious. I, know. <laughs> I just know that's gonna be what somebody say. Oh yeah, I'm sure there's tons of people who got the call this year who saw this Jay Z news and were like, maybe they'll call me in February. Yeah. Maybe, maybe this. <laughs> Good luck, girls. To all just, of you who want it, you better read the room. <laughs> Listen, that's all I'm saying. Um, apparently, uh, this same these same French tweets. Also tell us that a Drake album is due in November. I know that he's been talking about being in album mode or whatever <sighs> in between the, okay. working on TV shows and, um, I don't know, commiserating to strippers <laughs> and reading them poetry. Um, and also, there's a rumor that, oh, The weekend's supposed to have an album in November. But see, here's the thing. They apparently also allege... That Kanye West is going to have an album out in November. Oh, Lord. But he apparently has already announced that his new album is going to be coming out on the 27th of this month. The album is called Jesus is King. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And what's Jesus? Like, his nickname for his dick? The name of their next baby? Because I don't trust nothing coming out of Kanye's mouth or Kanye's company. Let me tell you something. Keep it. Okay? Like, <laughs> and you niggas have been swept back in with this Sunday service bullshit. All, bitch, I will not. All I have to do about all I have to say about Jesus is King is I agree. Good night. Have a blessed <laughs> night. I know this is That's not <laughs> all I have. This is not an album for the Amy's. I know that. I don't know. See, like an album called Jesus is King. You're not be. about to look. Mm-mm. You're not about to play with everybody. My God knows in my niggas face. love choirs. Everybody knows this shit. Even white people use this tactic. Yeah, I'm not playing this game with you. No. If you're getting closer to Christ on your own accord, in your own time, in your own time, good for you. And I feel like that is the greatest thing that Kanye West could possibly be doing. However, I've been peeping ever since, like prior to Coachella or whatever. He was in Calabasas and whatever shit, doing these Sunday service things and what and whatnot, yeah. and. Yes. A couple in there. I feel like most of the community was was holding strong. It was like, that's nice, <laughs> but we have questions that need answers. This Trump shit? Kept doing it. Still not over Every it. Sunday, slowly but shortly, I have seen more niggas after more niggas talking about, oh, this is going to all right. I don't know. This is going to sound kind of good. Because this nigga on his knees playing the piano nope. and shit like that. And I know a lot of the... The singers who are involved Mm -hmm. are like, I'm familiar with a lot of the singers that have been involved in stuff, in the stuff that he's doing and feel no shady kind of way towards any of them. You're singing, you're praising the Lord and you're getting your, you know, what you got to get. That's fine. I'm personally speaking from the Kanye of it all. Right. (laughs) I'm allowing him to keep it and do whatever, but you're not about to. Because now I'm seeing motherfuckers talking about, oh, but niggas didn't forgot that Kanye was a genius. This nigga is a genius. And he did it. Because he's fucking having these goddamn pop up praise and worship services all over the fucking country now and mixing goddamn, mixing the Clark sisters with Are You That Somebody (laughs) and fucking like whatever the fuck else. Like, girl, look, no. Right. No. Just no. Kanye West is not getting my money or I my just attention. don't have it for him based on this. 
I still have questions that need a couple of answers. Mm -hmm. I don't wish any ill will on this nigga. I feel like he has endured trauma and a lot of mental and emotional battering that many people just can't really understand. You know what I'm saying? So for that, I will give him the grace. Right. Of my distance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and yes. that alone. But you're not about to have some um, singing ass niggas come in here and remind me that God is good. And all of a sudden, you a genius again. That's no. a, not me. No. Not me. But I do wish you well and right. your babies are great. I'm just not that easily swindled. But go on ahead and, and make your money, sir, with your fans who are going to eat it up regardless. Did you see this clip? There was a clip of him because I guess his the last one that he did was in Chicago. And... He's being filmed like in this huge crowd of people that come to this free Sunday service, whatever mm-hmm. show that he's doing. He's being filmed like walking through this this huge crowd and he's just doing this little motion with his hands. First, he turns to the camera at one point oh, and he says, watch this. This is my city. This is my city. Watch this. And then he does this little movement with his hands similar to like a puppy that's trying to swim through a pool. Okay. <laughs> and he just does this little thing and everybody just moves out of his way. I said, this nigga thinks he's Moses. Yeah, he does. He thinks he's parting the sea. It gives me like American nigga story. Listen. I don't know how to feel about it. I'm here. telling you, Jesus is his nickname for his penis. I'm telling you, that nigga's gonna say something out of pocket, wild and crazy. He has a song called I Am a God. Listen, and even then I was like, no, no. I literally deleted that song from the <laughs> album that I actually, I enjoyed I the can, rest of I it. I can handle a lot. I know Jesus has uh, mixed reviews. I liked it. Aside from that song, which I wiped from my own existence. But anyways, uh, good luck to everybody. And yeah. um, God bless all the girls. Uh, mm-hmm. Speaking of albums, um, apparently Candy Burris <laughs> is um, wow. willing to do one more Escape album. <laughs> so You can keep that as well. <laughs> I don't. We don't want it. We do no, not wait, want it. No, wait, hold on. No, no, wait. Want it. Wait. Hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> now, hold on. So, the story goes that like Candy was at uh, the Black Music Honors, or I think they were received an Icon Award or something like that. And okay. hold on. Let me see. Maybe I can put this to the microphone because she can say what happened. <laughs> we go up on stage, give it our little speeches, and. Tamika Scott invites our mothers up. So my mama gets on the microphone and is like, I only have one wish, and that's for Escape to do just one more album together. <laughs> we have a full entire house of people, not to mention TV cameras. I gotta say no to that. My mama's only wish. Lord. <laughs> mama Joyce been manipulating Candy for a long time. Bruh, I love how Candy don't give a fuck. Like, Candy just goes, like, <laughs> say what happened. You know what I mean? Yeah, she just sat there. I <laughs> like, mean, when there's that many cameras on you anyways, like, how much lying about it can you really do? So. I think that is so funny that Tamika called the mamas on stage. And, and of course, Candy. Candy's <laughs> mama gonna say this shit. And Candy's like, God damn. I feel like that was a setup. Like, the other girls and Mama Joyce was probably all in and you on think together. I do. I Joyce. do. I think they recruited Mama Joyce. Oh. <laughs> That's not the first time Mama Joyce has said that. So they were like, if we do it in public, it's like a public proposal. Do, okay. Makes it harder for her to say no. Let's ride by OLG. <laughs> order some fried okra and just be like... Miss <laughs> Joyce. Miss <laughs> Joyce. We want to talk to you. So... Yeah. At first, when I watched this I clip, don't want it. because Candy apparently has like a YouTube channel, which I think it's really cool that more celebrities are are using YouTube as a way to kind of control their own narrative in a sense, okay. like just talk about whatever without like they have a it channel being like on influences? a blog first. Well, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like you, at least you have that place to just show whatever's going on in your life without having to think I hope that Bravo edits this the way that it should be right, you know what I mean you true. can just post yes. and approve whatever people are saying right but anyway she has this YouTube channel Candy Online and I assumed after watching this clip which was on her Instagram for it that she was just talking about what happened 
And then she was like, I said yes on the stage because I was on the spot. But according to this caption, she says, well, thanks to Mama Joyce, Escape is making a new album. And this is a convo with her glam. And then she goes into whatever else she talked about in that video. So I feel like if Escape gets the right production (laughs) together and like people who actually are going to take the album seriously and give them good direction... If they can get, like, producers that know how to do that old school sound with the new flair, because so many producers try and Mm -hmm. fail that. And there are a select few, I feel like, expensive ones and the ones you've never heard (laughs) of before. They're either real expensive or they're somewhere in somebody's house trying to get heard and not being given a chance. It's always like right. crazy, unbelievably talented producers that are going overlooked until they finally get a break. And then the motherfuckers that charge you half a million dollars for a track. Right. Either way, I feel like this album could be good. If they do really do it, good luck to them because it might be nice. And record all of it because I know y'all going to be arguing and you know we want to see it. Wow. Candy really is a whole influencer out here. Like, yeah. My mornings with the kids. She's just missing the hairline. <laughs> Speak I mean, on it with hair, Kiki Palmer. Yeah, what is that? Line. Like her red table talk? It is her red table talk. I mean, it's a white table, but it's the same concept. Kiki Palmer got a white table talk? No, Candy do. She had Kiki Palmer on it. Oh, Kiki Palmer was on her. Um... And Tamar was on it. <laughs> Tamar was on it? Oh, Tamar was on the white all table right. talk. Uh huh, all kind of shit. Amends. I'm into that. Tanya Sam. Don't know who that is. Cynthia right, Bailey. Well, moving on. All right. Well, yes. Yeah, still don't want that Escape album, but you know. That it, is totally Y'all go fair. for it. Y'all go for it. I'm if, just If saying, it's good, I will give it, you know, it's props, but I... If you give me the right first single... Yeah, the first single is going to be... I will give the rest of the album key. my attention. Yeah, the lead single is going to be so, so important here. All right. Um. So, Tia Marie pled guilty... <laughs> To this DWI case. Now you stop that. You stop it. But right was now. driving on rims. <laughs> she has had drinking issues. You're right. It's not funny. It isn't. It is not. I mean, it's, it's, it's not funny to be an alcoholic. It's no, no, funny no. that she was driving on rims. Through the Midtown Tunnel. <laughs> like, no, that's kind of. I'm so like, glad that's she like didn't the, hurt nobody. That's like, right. That's like the you get better and know better and you laugh with us. About yeah, it. one day she'll laugh with us about that. Yeah. But this is just another legal woe. She didn't she already lose a case to Fifty Cent? Oh, and he's still he. harassing her about he harassing her about this. That, oh, so <clears throat> oh my god, that nigga really is a bully. He's <laughs> so she pleads guilty to this DWI case, right? Of the time that the police stopped her because they literally saw sparks shooting from. <laughs> her bare rims as she was driving through the Queens Midtown Tunnel. Like, wow. You didn't have to say it like that. No, but that's facts. So, um, apparently, through this, she has to complete a couple of courses, obviously, including, this, uh, on wrapup.com, it says, a victim impact panel, which I am hoping and assuming means it's one of those things where you have to sit and, sit in like yeah. a room with people who have been impacted lost loved ones and stuff like that yeah. due to I think that's and exactly like, what that is like and I hope they give it to you and yeah. again I know that you have struggled since allegedly according to Mona's shows through with not, I mean because that's where I heard about it anyway with you know drinking issues or alcohol or whatnot, so like I'm not trying to beat her over the head about it, but at the same time, yeah. like I can't with this stuff. Yeah, come on now, like, like you can Uber have a drinking Lyft. problem and not drive drunk. Uber and Lyft is right there. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. you really need to minimize the damage here, girl. So she has to do this victim impact panel and then an impaired driver program. Damn. Then she also apparently has to install an in, an ignition interlock device. Yes. You know what this is? It's where you have to blow into it and if your blood why don't all cars are there it's that literally a, a breathalyzer that's attached to your car yeah. where you breathe it you it literally stops your engine from starting yeah it won't start if up. you're above whatever your country or city or state or whatever is yeah. legal limit is that's a really brilliant idea that's the kind of thing people should just buy you could probably get it on amazon and put it on your car just because I'll tell you one thing, though. I did buy a breathalyzer on Amazon after I read this because and I'll tell you why that was stupid afterwards. <laughs> because but, you don't drive. <laughs> well, yeah, but it, <laughs> I didn't buy it because of that. Oh. Um, But I bought it because her 
blood alcohol concentration was described as more than three times the legal limit. Yikes. And they're always described as something times the legal limit or however further past the legal limit. Right. But I've never been able to gauge what that kind of drunk feels like. Mm. You know what I mean? So I bought a breathalyzer because I was like, I'm going to have a breathalyzer in my house. You are and the next time I go out and so I come dumb. home fucked up, I'm going <laughs> to blow in it and then do the math to try and figure it out. And then I thought to myself, after I already ordered it, I'm talking about literally as soon as Amazon said, thank you, your order is being whatever. Right. I was like, well, <laughs> she was driving on three wheels. <laughs> so Lord. she was probably really fucked up. Yeah, had to be. That's probably enough said, you yeah. know? Well, but, hmm. I mean, it depends. I guess it depends on like a bunch of different factors. What exactly you were drinking, how much you weigh and all this other sort right, of stuff. But it looks like you hit the legal limit somewhere between two and three drinks. That's something because I'm like, it's, and it's within like an hour. Three times the legal limit. Is that like a Texas sized margarita BBQ? <laughs> like, well, are we talking about like wait, Willie's Daiquiri Factory Night? That's a, well, I actually don't know how big those drinks are. See, you, this is the thing. If you know you've been drinking, you know you out here toddling to the side or whatever, you need to let somebody else drive or call you a fucking ride. And, share. I'm, and for, for clarity, I'm not trying to act like holier than that. I've absolutely driven under the influence yes, of alcohol. And before, it was foolish. And it was absolutely fucking stupid. And not stupid, some shit I would and do I've again. I've never done it again. Mm-hmm. And it, that was also before the existence of rideshare apps. Yeah. But aside from that, I'm not trying to act like, oh, how dare you girls? Many of these bitches, even judgmental ones, have also driven while they yeah. should not have been driving. Oh, absolutely. But it's just like, come on, girl. Like, like, and she... You're going to hurt somebody. Tia Marie apparently also was dealing with a DUI back in 2011. So, like, you come on. I've slept in my car before yeah. because I was fucked up. Fully woke up in North Miami with like, the sun out. Like, holy shit. <laughs> Ooh, so, that was one for the books. That is what you did tonight, huh? Yep. <laughs> Just went by the Honda wall. Civic. I mean, I can't act like niggas in Oklahoma don't get drunk and drive through the fields and shit like that. That <laughs> definitely happens. <laughs> And that de- niggas definitely do. Of something else. <laughs> but you know, they're not on the highway with that shit. It's just com- like, come on. There's uh-huh. enough uh, access and resources and and education surrounding the severity of these things now that we just got to do better and encourage others to do better and stuff like that. And I know that some people struggle and whatnot and it's a thing that's going to happen. But I am glad that at the very least she will be uh, a part of some programs that hopefully will uh, help her out and get through to her and stuff like that. But yes, obviously in the meantime, 50 Sun is bullying her about it. Um, See. He uh, tweeted a photo of her via, I think this is via TMZ, with the headline about her DWI. And his caption says, uh, SMH, looking like the old drink lady from up the block. Now, I don't know if he meant like the old lady who sells like drinks and fruit cups and stuff off the block, mm-hmm. or if it was a uh, typo and he meant the old drunk lady. That's probably what I'm it assuming was. The latter. Yeah. Um, and then he at Lisa Bloom, <clears throat> who was representing. Um, Tia Marie and whatever uh, case between her and 50 Cent and that other nigga. He said, Lisa Bloom, there goes your Me Too movement. Why are you so quiet, bitch? What? Yep. What the hell do... Uh, oh, God. <laughs> all right. Oh, maybe because Lisa Bloom was working against all those girls. I mean, well, Lisa Bloom was definitely a part of a lot of um, cases with women and stuff that they had going like, on. Like, I think she was trying that. to protect Harvey Weinstein. That came Ooh. out within the past couple of days. I don't know. Yeah, that's what it was. I didn't hear about that, but I'm not Yeah, that. like she was working to like dis- discredit some of these girls. And Rose well, what McGowan, the fuck I that got to do with Tierra Marie? Well, see that? I don't know. I'm like, why did you include two different stories in... <laughs> like, you commented on two different stories in one Instagram post or Like, I know that Lisa Bloom and Tierra Marie works together, but I don't mm. know. I what. mean, and that doesn't take away from the fact that Me Too is still like very... like. Yeah, one woman being stank that. one time or multiple times does not take away from how important that movement is. So if you if if you find that one woman wow. lied about getting you know punched in the face, then you could tell niggas you couldn't tell niggas that they are ain't all lying. Yep. you know what I mean. You couldn't. So no matter what the numbers say, otherwise. it's like what are you supposed to do? Woo. Okay. Again, I don't understand why Fifty Cent decided to say that then, but all right. 
you know, typical Instagram antics and he knows that there is enough people to his satisfaction that enjoy it. So I want him to grow I up. He keeps it up. I really do. I want him to grow up. How old is 50 Cent? Like 45? Older, old enough. But I, I Googled 40 Cent. You know, for a lot of these like rap niggas from the hood, they don't really mature until around 57. 44 years old. So, I know it. Yeah. Maybe he'll yes. have his his 444 era. Sometime. I don't think so. The man's not even married. You don't even have a reason oh, to man. act like he has some sense. He ain't worried girlfriend. about losing no woman. And if he loses, so what? <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm sure he don't give a shit. The way the man treats his own son? No. You can't tell me nothing redeeming about That's 50 just... Cent. That is just disgusting. Mm-mm. Nope. Sorry. Um. <sighs> Moving on to another rapper from Queens. Nas is Nas from Queens. Nas from Brooklyn. Yes, but you know goddamn well. Okay. Oh, Nickly, (laughs) Nickly. Is it Nicki Minaj? (laughs) So, in some news that I couldn't feel any more indifferent about. um, (laughs) Okay. Nicki Minaj. Announced her uh, alleged retirement on Instagram the other day. Uh, here's what she here's what she tweeted. She said, um, <clears throat> "Here you go." She said, "I've decided to retire." And have my family. I can't stand you. I know you guys are happy now. To my fans, my babies. Keep repping me. Do it till the death of me. In the box because ain't nobody checking me. <laughs> Love you for life. Um, so I want something. I'm gonna like take that. I'm gonna take your phone away. That's, <laughs> That's a problem. Um so yeah, she said that she decided she's decided to retire and have her family. Okay. And she followed that up by saying, I know you guys are happy now. And that that I know you guys are happy now is that why I knew it. she was full of shit. That's that was it. <sighs> I knew it because the night before, like you know, late night, early morning, whatever that time of day is. She had been like tweeting screenshots where she had been going back and forth in the Instagram. I just DMs. saw this today. I saw. See, I saw that like the night it happened. I did. I did not know anything about this part until where it today. was like all this shit about Cardi or whatever, yeah. like with the song "Blacked Out," "Be Careful, Blacked Out" or whatever in, in the screenshot. I'm like, okay, but like, like we know who you're talking about. Exactly, so why did you black out? We know, out girl. That we part? know who you're super mad at and pressed about. We know, sis. So. After that, and then so then that morning, she had been like in her feelings and continuing this same emotional outburst. So when she said she's retiring, like, I know you guys are happy now. I was like, this bitch is simply throwing a fit because she feels like she had said the night before. I don't even know why I bothered writing all my shit since apparently it don't matter or something like that. And I'm like, she is just deep in her feelings. I don't like um, pay attention to her individual tweets and posts and stuff like that because I don't follow her on anything. So I only really see the stuff that y'all put on my timeline or the stuff that makes it to these websites. Um, Yeah. So I didn't know anything about her going back and forth with whoever (laughs) blogs over at Hip Hop DX or whoever said something to her. But apparently they said something about, I guess, they they could tell who Cardi is through her raps or something and they didn't feel that way about Nicki Minaj. What? And she went on this whole rant in their DMs and then screenshot and posted that whole thing and then named all of these songs of hers that I guess were her defense to the contrary. Yeah, I mean, that's a stupid thing to say. Which again, (laughs) Nicki has written a lot of music about It is a (laughs) very dumb thing to say, but it's like, girl, are we going to keep getting tied up into every dumb thing that somebody say about you? Do you know that you're Nicki Minaj? We keep coming back to this. Nicki Minaj is too famous to act like this. (laughs) And (laughs) it just continues to be true. It's not even just like, you're not only too famous, 
you're too talented. Yes. You've worked too hard for too long. Yeah. Like the people that, it, to me, it was like one thing to maybe get spicy with Charlemagne. As, as much of a fool as that nigga is. I mean... He's still a part of a show. Because it seems yeah. like her concern is that these people that she refers to as hip hop heads are saying these things about her. Oh, wow. So it's like, okay, well, that nigga is a part of like the number one syndicated like, right. hip hop show or whatever. Right. So like, I guess that. But you going back and forth with academics and hip hop DS <laughs> right, no. and random ass <laughs> bloggers we've never heard right, of before. No, exactly. Charlemagne is at least a celebrity in his own right. It makes sense. Like, but these random niggas it's like girl are you really bothered by these nobody ass you people? are literally giving them life you are like you're giving them something to talk about <laughs> i don't get it um really so like, we keep saying sis you are the icon you are the legend you are that you just don't behave like it and i'm not one of those people who thinks celebrities should never respond or never respond even critically or to people who are criticizing them i just think nikki doesn't Nikki has a tendency to like sick the barbs on people who say something she don't like if she happens to notice it. That's her culture. <clears throat> she has a tendency to do that, like to to direct the barbs into being their crazy ass selves. And then it's like it's that and then it's sis, I just don't understand some of the things you choose to give energy or life to because these niggas are literally nothing. And it would not be a story or on the blogs or something for people to harass you about if you didn't ever make it a thing. No shade, you're not like you're not like Mariah Lynn or like one of these girls that like That's need all, shade. all the hell like whatever. <laughs> You're not like one of these girls that like need yeah. all of the attention they can get. Right. You can literally sun people by paying them dust. Yep. Like you ignoring what the fuck they have to say is power in itself. You're literally giving people life by giving and it's not I understand that she's human and I know and I've said this way prior to all the Queen Radio shit. She's been upset with the fact that Cardi B don't write her music mm -hmm. and she's got a Grammy. And don't and claim to either. Concerned. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she's being celebrated anyway. Like, that shit eats her up and I can understand. I don't write music, but... I've written before. I understand being up all fucking night and trying to meet deadlines and do all this. Like I understand that writing music, especially as much verses and music that you have out and being like, okay, so here they just, they found this girl in the Bronx and now she has a rap career. She don't write mm -hmm. her raps, but like, bitch, that doesn't change the fact. Like, I don't think that anybody's fooled into thinking that yeah. you don't write your raps now because Cardi B or that we think Cardi B writes or something. Like everybody kind of knows what time it is. Right. And it's like you're selecting any person that you see that says something about you that you don't like and just giving them all the life in the world and then and talk about literally even people who don't work in the entertainment industry or the hip hop industry at all. Right. Talking about like starting segments on Queen Radio or on Instagram to just call out random niggas on Instagram that say something she don't like. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not to say that you don't you have the right to do that, but don't act any way when people raise an eyebrow when they give you a Dwayne Johnson and be like, um, we don't understand. You good? Right? Like we really don't get this. And I guess it's kind of like, how dare y'all? As so as from the way I see it, it's kind of like, how dare y'all give this girl all these props and all this attention and all these awards and a fucking Grammy when she didn't even write her music? Like, I deserve all of those things no, over I mean, her because I write my music and she doesn't. But Cardi is far from the only rapper in the industry who does not write their own shit. And I strongly doubt Nikki keeps this same kind of energy from men who don't I've write their own I've said this before. Lyrics. I know that you work with rappers that don't write their own music. Male rappers that who don't that write their own Who was that little boy with the skittle colored hair? Music. That little white boy? Takashi 6 9 the locked up There boy? you go. Oh, is he locked up? Takashi 6 9 has been locked up for a while now, sis. Oh, well. I mean, I'm not surprised that you don't know because why should you care? But yeah, <laughs> he ain't been in the street. That's why you haven't heard about him. <laughs> But still, I bet that little boy don't write his own music. He might. Who knows? But like... If he doesn't write his own music, God bless him. Because there's not much to it. But I mean, I'm just saying. I would really doubt that she I know the same kind of venom. That you have worked with motherfuckers in rap specifically that don't write their own music. So to hold women to this higher standard, because I know that you have been held to a higher standard, mm -hmm. just to me seems unfair. But separate to that, like, sis, what the fuck Cardi is doing? Ain't got shit to do with you. Like, like it's just too... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't does, know. It does, though. They're her things. I think the best part about this is that you are aware that you need a break. 
I don't think anybody really buys that you are retiring, sis. And honestly, even if you did retire, she's not retiring, honey. <laughs> God go with you. You know what I'm saying? You have earned more than your stripes. Mm -mm. You karate kick the fucking door open again for women in rap. Good for you. If you don't ever come back, I understand, sis. But nobody buys it. Like, literally, none of us (laughs) believe you. And we know that, you know, you're going to go do what you want to do. Like, you were literally just talking about your fifth album and and got shit to do. Exactly. Capsule collections and all this other stuff. And now you're talking about retiring because niggas are getting on your nerves. Like, I don't know what needs to be done. I know that some people... And... (sighs) Some people just have different, like, internal tickings when it comes to this social media stuff. That's true. And some people who are incredibly famous, incredibly wealthy, and you would expect, especially knowing poverty or existing in brokenness, you would expect, oh, you have too much wealth and and, and too many things to do to be so concerned with what the fuck is going on especially on Especially because she is always talking about how she's too rich to be dealing with y'all and this type of thing. And it's like... But... <laughs> obviously the response is that and Cardi does the exact same thing and has for literally ever worrying about every goddamn thing that everybody say about you and your baby and your knees and whatever the fuck like bitch at, at some point you just have to yeah. f- you learn how to use filters and muting and blocking and all that other fucking shit which I'm actually going to cover some more in my read later for okay. unrelated purposes All right, but like I know that if I I'm not as present on social media as I may have been like six years ago or however oh, long. Oh, definitely not. Because a lot of it is just exhausting. And mm-hmm. I'm talking about stuff that has nothing to do with me. I'm not talking about people saying things to me. I'm talking about the things that I see y'all saying <laughs> right, to one that another. I'm tired of seeing, yes. So I know that if I can be like, woo, that stuff puts me in a bad place, I'm going to take a step back. I feel like Nicki Minaj should be able to do the yeah. exact same thing. But sis... In your time away from whatever, Mm -hmm. um, I hope that you find clarity. First and foremost, I hope that you find therapy. Because if you're not in therapy right now, and I really want to say you're not, you should get to them as soon as possible. If you are... Um, maybe a second or third opinion. Maybe you need to go and talk to somebody else. Try some new, some new things out. Because I feel like somebody at some point who is unbiased and don't need no money from you um, besides what they charge needs to sit down with you and pick your brain and figure out why you give a fuck about stuff that you don't really need to give a fuck so passionately about. Right. Being in, in, in DJ academics, and I still don't know if this nigga's legitimately a DJ or not, um, in his DMs, and threatening him and all this other stuff because whatever dumb shit. Like, we don't even give a fuck about what that nigga says about the time of day. Like, are you kidding me? You, like, talk about your husband when I talk to him and shit like that? Now calling him Alvin in the chip fun. <laughs> That was just hilarious, <laughs> and I accept that as just a great, um, a great one. barb, Idiot. no pun intended. But, no, the pun was intended. No, it was. But, like, was. seriously? Academ- Who are you gonna argue with next? Lyrica Anderson, mama? Like, right. Why? What are we doing? For what? Yeah, I agree. But I don't think she's actually going to be stepping away for all that long. She said she was going to address this whole situation on Queen Radio because she shouldn't have did the barbs like that. All right. So. She said, I'm still here. Okay. Someone said to her, can you please can you please just address this retirement thing? The barbs were losing it. Okay. They were in high distress. <laughs> I'm like, Y'all calm yourself. bitches knew, Y'all knew she wasn't retiring. You knew she wasn't. Shout out to those of you who actually had some goddamn sense and considered yourself a barb and probably just sent her a gift like, girl, what's the problem? Let's talk about it. Because you know that you're not retiring. Right. But everybody's talking about, like, if you really took this seriously, think about how many other rappers, like classic legendary rappers, have been like, I'm retiring. And then went on to release five more albums. Yeah. Stop. Um... But she said to this person who uh, requested more information, I'm still right here, still madly in love with you guys, and you know that. In hindsight, this should have been a Queen Radio discussion, and it will be. I promise you guys we'll be happy. No guests, just us talking about everything. The tweet was abrupt and insensitive. I apologize, babe. Which, 
<laughs> is further evidence that this was like yep. a rash decision mm-hmm. that she made feelings, like in her feelings. <laughs> and she's just upset. And like, I get that girl. And there are trained, educated professionals who can get to the root, not the root, but the root mm-hmm. of all of that and help you unpack it and come back better and healthier and not giving a fuck Lord. about the rest of this shit. But this ain't cute. It's like, we don't want to see you doing this. We want to see you wearing them long, colorful wigs and wrapping your motherfucking ass off and standing in the fact that you know you a bad bitch. Like, you've worked too hard and been bad for far too long to be, to have any, anybody, specifically niggas like academics and Hip Hop DX and random bitches in fucking wherever the fuck of North Florida, (laughs) like... Having you like questioning whether you should have your Girl. shit or not, and, and like people who do not matter what? at all or should not matter at all in your world. They told Beyonce she didn't have her baby. They told her she didn't have her baby. <laughs> they, did. they told her she didn't have her fucking baby after the bitch had miscarriages and shit, and she still Ooh. kept her fucking cool. Solange wanted to box all y'all bitches. Solange wanted to fight all of you niggas. Miss <laughs> Tina was ready to square up, nigga. Everybody was ready to fight, and Beyonce stood at home and and got to fucking work. Yeah. You're not gonna tell me, Onika, yeah. that you don't have the reach and the ability. Now, come on now. Take the break that you you deservedly need or whatever. You want to have a baby with this nigga or whatever. I don't even care about that. God bless. Good luck. Because honestly, I only feel like she with this nigga so she can have that name. I really feel like she wants to be called Mrs. Petty for real. Oh, Lord. I'm not, and then she's going to have that. That, baby, that, that baby for, like, timing purposes. Mm-hmm. And then she's going to be in that courtroom when it's all said and done. Like, um, <laughs> what's love got to do Listen. with it? I don't care about all of that other stuff as long as I can keep my name. I worked too hard for it, Your Honor. <laughs> and then the other nigga going to be on the other side. No, 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 no. She can't have that name now. That, 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 that got my na- that daddy blood on it. All right? She can go where she want to go. If she want to go, she can go, but the name stays with me. I hope niggas don't think that's really how that works. If if your wife legally changes her name, she is under oh, no obligation to change. <laughs> no, I don't think you are. I actually can totally see this happening. And I was going to say, I hope that her lawyers forced her to do, an, um, not a NDA, prenup? although an NDA would be... <laughs> probably very useful that man as well. look like he really want to have he need to be under an NDA and he need to be under a prenup he need to be under both of them we will probably hear more out of that man when they are no longer together than we ever will with them together well I mean he got his own problems with this whole like registered sex offender thing and like see I'm sorry I don't care about that like she know about that and she's still with that nigga and I really don't care about them being together like you know what I'm saying like I'm not attached to her or her decisions so much so that that right. moves me but honey I mean, the just barbs the thought of marrying a man who like they I can't <laughs> they posted a photo fo- like okay so she I guess posted some shit on Instagram or wherever of them out by the pool and he's like shirtless and has oh, I her saw that. in his arms and stuff yeah the Barb's photoshopped this nigga out of the picture, <laughs> and she literally looks like Nancy Downs from the crack, like <laughs> levitating. And I was like, no shade. This is sick. I like, hope the Barb's want better for her. Like, <laughs> yeah, a lot of the Barb's hate him. I mean, and, and I think I the feeling is mutual. I can't, because it just doesn't. When they get into it with the carbs, and the carbs bring up this whole sex offender thing, well, the it's carbs like, can't say much. You're right about that Cardi shit. But what Offset ain't so. is no child rapist. So there is that. <laughs> he might cheat, but which one of these hoes don't cheat? I mean, if we have a, a fucking a measuring tape for ain't shit niggas or a scale for fuck I'm niggas. I'm just saying. <laughs> I am just right. saying. But yeah, I think Nikki is really dealing with some some long term, long festering insecurity, and she's gonna have to address it at some point. Like, like you're super good. Sis. You are Nikki fucking Minaj, and yet you follow like over five thousand people on Twitter, and I would guess forty five hundred of them are your stands. Like I'm just scrolling through it right now, and it's nothing but Nikki Minaj stands. It's like she has to be surrounded by no nothing but like utter positivity about herself that's fine like all she ever wants to see is people gassing her up and like telling her how much they love her but what else is it gonna take no I think that's see that's what I'm saying I think there's something wrong when you need so much external validation 
Well, yeah, for sure. But like 5, at the same time, stands, five thousand stands. At the same time, when you're a star as famous as someone like a Nicki Minaj, you're just followed by mess and negativity, regardless of whether you want to or not. So I understand, That's like. True curating at least your, you your internet your presence. Mentions. That's what I'm saying. Like, I understand at the least, you know, curating your Instagram, Twitter presence so that you are mostly met with positivity. But my thing is, if you have five or let's say 4,500 motherfuckers that are showering you in praise every day, all day long, then what's... Why do these random hip-hop why do blogs these matter? random motherfuckers... Again, get so much out yes, of you because the ex- because the validation does not come from within, and so any negativity has to be pounced on and addressed and eliminated. Really, I see. I'm just saying that's what it looks like to me. And a therapist could help her a lot with working. You really through that gave shit. Ac- academics a headline. Academics, like we <laughs> don't care about that nigga. We don't care so much. I can't even remember the last thing he did that had people saying his name. I can't even. Was it the was it thing with the thing with the, with the Migos? Maybe. What I don't even know if that was him. So I don't know. But yeah, these, got the like, nigga. When I tell you that we don't care, all over these blogs, complex and everything else. Like, girl, for what? You think that nigga was Larry King? <laughs> I did see though that he tweeted like Nicki Minaj said she's gonna put a hit out on me, and somebody said Nicki ain't had a hit in years. Don't worry about I it. And I was too. like, God damn, you niggas are rude. Nicki has had a hit. I'm sure. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure she had. Academics has two million followers. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> two point two million followers on Instagram, man. I would have never guessed. And you know what? I'm sure some of that is from being featured by people like Nicki Minaj. Or Good or bad. Some of that is from having a working PayPal account. Okay, you didn't. Have I mean, to. I'm, and I'm not blaming him. <laughs> you I'm just saying, have to do that. like, I'm just saying. You know, I can't wait for the generation to break this understanding that these numbers are so frivolous and don't mean fucking anything. Oh, wait, no, I think you're right, because I just found his personal page and it has three hundred and seventy four thousand followers. Well, that doesn't mean anything either, because if he just has one more, if he if all of the mess is on the other page, then obviously that page. Oh, okay. But see, I'm not going to help me figure out how this shit works. We don't care about this. Start your family if that's what you want to do. Good luck with you. I hope that you have a healthy and happy time with all of that. And I sincerely hope that you are getting fucked on the beach somewhere to your pleasure and that you come back from this refreshed and not concerned by any other bitch riding or non-riding and you just worry about you and the work that you do. Because I'm telling you, I'm being above it would look so good on you, girl. Really would. Being above it would look so good on you, girl. Really would. It really would. That Beyonce, Beyonce behavior it would be so cute on you, sis. It really would. I'm sorry. A therapist is chunk change for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sit down with a trained professional. I chose a black woman, and as I, as I say all of the time. Yeah. And unpack all of this stuff. You can literally, I spoke to my therapist this morning mm. and it started a little something like this. Well, where do you want to begin? Because I've got a, plenty of places <laughs> to stop. Lots going on. Lots of things to <laughs> yes. talk about. I'm ragged. Right. Good I'm luck. just saying, if I collaborated with Beyonce, even once, but especially multiple times. Beyonce. Mariah Carey, Madonna, Rihanna, Rihanna <laughs> Jay Z, all Nas. of the, all of Nikki's accolades, all of the like, come on, girl. truly, ve- like that's how you know something is wrong. And like, you know, we know, we know you write your raps, and we know that Cardi does not. Like, what do you want for us to do? People are just here to be entertained, girl. Most people do not care about. It's like, that oh, shit. but then Cardi won this songwriter thing for ASCAP, and they flamed her all day long on the internet. <laughs> about it right. like it's not I don't know what else needs to be done so you can sit in the room and contribute you know three lines of a verse and be credited as a songwriter on something and you know that I don't like so what are we doing oh glory well girls that's it for oh for the record I saw that um Malik Yoba did an interview with the Breakfast Club oh did he and um for those of y'all who, because I saw like one or two people say something about it to me in my mentions today. I didn't watch that because um, 
I decided that of all of the people uh, that Malik Yoba could have a conversation with about mm. um, his trans attraction, Woof. I just don't want to see it moderated by the Breakfast Club. And that's literally no shade to anybody. That's how the fuck I feel. So, I mean, um, <laughs> I feel the same way and, and I I will fully stand up in the shade of the not Breakfast shade, Club. It's, it's I mean, fact. That's just how I feel. Right. Like, y'all are just transphobic. Y'all handle these conversations poorly every time. I've seen enough interviews with queer people, trans people, gay people, lesbian people, and had and heard questions that have just been like, I'm sorry. What are you doing? What is this the 1930s? The way they did Jane and, and Mock. <laughs> Jane and Mock, Young MA. You know, like they've listen. Right. And I know that sometimes you will ask a question that are sometimes some people who don't know any better can ask questions that just sound really daft and ignorant and mm-hmm. offensive and they're atten- and they're sincerely trying to learn or whatever and I can understand that but I'm not uh Malik Yoba's representative and True. you know I don't have to watch that. I, right, I, I don't know, even know if they got into that whole conversation cuz I didn't see it either. Like I just heard Well, about he it. was there with um <clears throat> some trans activists and speakers oh, along okay. with him. And what I do know that he said was um that he felt like he was stepping up and that more black men needed to and I know that he name dropped Eddie Murphy, Teddy Pendergrass and Mr. C as people who have also been vilified for being allegedly uh trans attracted mm-hmm. as well. So take that uh and leave if you want to, you can go right up on the internet and watch it for yourself and um, gain your own opinions but I just didn't feel like intentionally aggravating myself so yeah I mean and my default setting is to believe victims until I have a reason to not so I'm gonna just leave that right there well that is it this week in Hot Tops or when they top girl <laughs> when they top us whatever <laughs> we're done Hey, y'all. So listen, support for today's show comes from Bevel. Welcome back, Bevel. So you know Bevel is the first and only end-to-end shaving system designed for a consistently smooth, irritation-free shave. If you're anything like me, you're very particular about the shaving process and all of the things because you know that we can have irritation and it is the worst. And the Bevel Trimmer, a GQ Award winner and go-to product for the best barbers in the game. Now get to know Bevel Skin a deter- uh, dermatologist-tested solution that helps cleanse and hydrate skin and even skin tone. Bevel was designed specifically to work for our skin, for black women and black men. Finally, a lineup that complements your lineup, a face wash, a gentle yet powerful exfoliating toner, moisturizing face gel, and the like. All sorts of good stuff in there for your skin and for your feel goods and your smell goods and hazel, witch hazel. All those things. Shea butters <laughs> and things like that. So try it out. Yeah, you definitely should. They have been huge supporters of the show. Y'all know how much I love that form. Beauty. Oh, my God. Absolutely popping. They are the ones who came up with all that and have just always been about black people and blackness. So go ahead and get your bevel trimmer, your shave system or your bevel skin today at Target.com and in store. Also on Amazon and get bevel.com. And for a limited time, you can take 15% off your next shipment with bevel. Just go to get bevel.com slash the read and the promo will be automatically applied at checkout this offer does exclude the trimmer girls sorry but everything else is up for grabs that's g-e-t-b-e-v-e-l dot com slash the read get bevel.com slash the read let them know we sent you all right let's get back to the show we have returned we have it is time for the listener letters send your questions to ask the read at gmail.com we may just read them aloud on the show um Lots of letters and comments this week for uh, me personally. I just want to say thank you to everybody who reached out. I'm sorry that so many of you um, can relate to the stuff we were talking about last week because it's just really super fucking tragic. But I really want to thank all of you who have sent me words of encouragement and love because they mean a lot. And um, I did have one day of being like, oh, what the fuck did I do? But then I was fine. So, yeah. yeah. And I told my therapist that I did it, too. And she was stunned. I'm sure. (laughs) She was like, you told people on your podcast something about your life she just could not believe it so but she said she thought it was a good thing as well for me to just you know say it and be open and vulnerable and hope that it can help somebody else going through the same thing and i have received so many of those letters so right thanks to y'all we also got a letter from um a high school teacher who 
teaches, you know, all kind of kids, cis, het, but also like all across the queer spectrum. And she said all these kids are dealing with something similar with like parents are not understanding me and turning me away and making me feel like this and that she felt like she could play this for them and be like, here's somebody, you know, a bit older than you who knows what you're talking about, who has been through the same sort of thing. And so maybe you can get something out of this. That's amazing. It really is. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate it so much. However, now it is time to dive back into the mess. Actually, this first question is not mess. It is about a work of art that came on a little bit ago called the Steven Universe movie. This one comes from Sandra, who says, I need to know what did y'all think? What was your favorite song? I started watching Steven Universe because of you. I'm a nerd and I like nerdy things, but I thought the show was going to be cheesy until I heard y'all praising it. So I checked it out and I've been hooked ever since. Love you guys, Sandra. It's just a great show. I mean, like... Um, I've said before, it starts kind of slow for some people. It kind of, st- it's, and I, that's actually one of my favorite things about it. Yeah, me too. Cause it starts just like a cartoon, Yeah, you know, like there's no big setup and tons of exposition in the first couple of episodes. It's literally just it's this kid <laughs> who has magic powers and magic friends and they live in this city on the beach or whatnot. To see those first, like maybe yeah. eight to 10 episodes to now the character development it, it's anyway, so much. <laughs> um, the Steven Universe movie was spectacular. It was so great. I don't know the names of the songs, but the one that I've already downloaded the soundtrack. It's on yeah, Apple Music. <laughs> the one, um, oh, there are two that I love the most, and that's the song that Garnet sings when she's Garnet again. <laughs> and then <laughs> okay. the, my favorite is the song that the diamonds sing in the beginning and the end. That the come with live with us in the yeah. palace one. I just think that the harmonies and like the softness of it was really beautiful. Oh, that's and it's sweet. also like the fact that it's very clearly like inspired by like old golden era Disney movies and stuff with like the fairy tale book opening in the beginning mm. and even the the design of Spinel is very Disney. <sighs> so I thought that the the singing yeah. that the diamond song at the beginning and the end reminded me of a classic Disney movie and I really liked it. The movie was great. It was. I really liked, um, so I liked how they switched it up on us. Mm-hmm. This random bitch just drops out of the sky, mad at everybody, Perfect kills our movie. faves. We're so pissed. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, all of the shit that ensues from there, Steven trying to get all of them to remember who they were and then realizing, damn, I got to get this bitch to remember herself so we can figure out why she did this. But what really fucked me up was when I realized them black streaks on her face were from crying for thousands of fucking years. I'm like, Mm -hmm. listen. Steven's mama was trifling as fuck. I was about to say, Pink Diamond had to have some incredible pussy. She was... Because how, girl? So trifling. I don't understand how everybody loved you when you were real... You left that child, that that gym girl thing, on a planet... No, just some floating garden Just rock. a garden somewhere in just, space. Just somewhere in space for 6,000 years, sis. And just acted like he was going to the supermarket or some shit. Oh, no, and told, this is a game. This is how it's played. Yeah. You stand right there, and then I'll be back. What a wench. <laughs> so, I love the soundtrack, but the song that Spinell sings is called Drift Away. When they're oh, up yes. on, in the garden, that one is really beautiful, really yeah. um, heart-wrenching. But yes, I loved it. Nigga, when Steven and Greg fused. Ni- okay. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that shit at all. The Jamaican man. <laughs> she, whoever plays that little lady, I love it. Oh, they're not Jamaican. They're African. Oh, she's African? Nana, yeah, the Nana? No, the, the mayor. Yeah, the grandma. Yeah, she's like an older lady, but isn't, yes. she, isn't she the mayor of Beach she's, City now? No, she's the pe- the nigga who with the pizza shop. That's his mom. But is, she's the mayor now. Yes, but she's not oh, Jamaican. Okay, all right. I thought you were arguing me about her being the mayor. No, she is the mayor. I remember that. <laughs> oh, they're well, not Jamaican. I, I, I frequently mess up where accents are from. Sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> so. Fine. Um, but yeah, Stephen I loved and it. Greg was so that good. That fusion. <laughs> I love that it it went from like me thinking to myself, are these niggas about to fuse? When he's when Greg said something to him about like what did it even work or so whatever. Yeah. I was like, 
are they going to fuse right now? And they did. <laughs> the design for their fusion is spectacular. It's so good. It's, it's so, so good. fucking good. <laughs> I love this series, my nigga. It is so good. It's just pure and colorful, and it, you can tell that it is a show that cares. Yeah. It doesn't try super, like, like PBS cartoon to get through to, you know what I mean? It yeah. just, it's very subtle in a lot of its... Um, like social efforts. Yeah. It's not preachy at all. It's not like beating you over the head. But it is just a, it's a show that just feels good and it feels pure and it has so much heart. Yeah. It's designed so well. The music is great. The movie was just so like, it was so much fun. Yeah. It teaches through like showing. Yeah. Like we saw how the diamonds one by one, like, began to see how they were fucking up and how they had done Pink so wrong and abused her and driven her to this and all this. And then you can even see with White Diamond who is like trying so hard to be a good person. And then it slips out sometimes. She just says the absolute wrong thing. But the thing is like she has learned and she is really making an effort. Like like you said, they don't just spell it out like this is why you're a mm-hmm. bad thing or whatever. They like show how you can change and then show what that change looks like. It's amazing for a cartoon how much depth yeah. each of the characters do. Right. Even just in the main series, like when you think about when when Amethyst takes Steven to the, the kindergarten and that whole oh, like, man, story that was of so her sad. and her feeling of, of inadequacy and like feeling defective and shit. And like literally every single character has a million layers and they're told so well and it's all wrapped up in this super colorful, very fun, yeah, lighthearted and, and deep when it needs to be sort of show. And funny as hell. And funny as fuck. Peridot is such a little dyke. <laughs> Oh, I mean, yeah. all of them are, but Peridot is. But that's not, because a they're dark. non. They don't have. They're rocks, right? You know what I'm saying? So you can't really be mad. So they're but... not really like. And I love that. That's another thing. It's like that they don't beat you over the head with that, or like try to impress anything or yeah. on you. But like I've seen like Stevani's social media page oh, in her yeah. description. The it says intersex non-binary. Yeah, I'm like so I'm like Stevani is intersex because and non-binary. she literally is right. like she is those things. So I love that it at least or puts, they are those things. Right. It puts the words in there it's not telling you you guys need to know what this means because da 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 but it's like you can whether you are 12 or 40 or whatever right. you can go and google this and just learn about it you know what I mean because really as could. I've said a million times these people aren't going anywhere queer people trans people non-binary black people <laughs> You know, women. Like, they're just going to keep being born. Not going anywhere, yes. So, and we might as well just accept that and educate oh. ourselves. But Steven Universe movie was so great. And I, I'm i excited to see if... Because I'm assuming Spinell is going to be a part of the series now. Oh, yeah. Here I wonder how they're going back to Homeworld, though. They might leave Homeworld alone for a while. Yeah, I'm assuming that she'll probably pop up here and there with the diamonds when they talk to them and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I guess like she's going to be... And I just loved how they tied that in from going to, like... From where the, the, the season, the last season ended, how they tied yeah. it with, like, the diamonds wanting Steven to stay on Homeworld because right. of how much they miss Pink. And they still sort of are confused with the fact that he's not pink. Right. So then ending it with like, oh, well, Spinel can be our pink. And, and she's Spinel like, like, totally. Sure can, girl. I've, I've just been, been on a rock. looking for love <laughs> for 6,000 oh, fucking years. Her song about, that song about, you know, you'll find it one day, that duet with Steven. I was like, God damn. It's such a great show. When Steven was talking about his mama... <laughs> And said, like, I know you didn't want me to have to deal with your problems, but you're a part of me now. And I have to deal with the shit you left behind. I was like, yo, uh, shout out to everybody who had a problematic parent. <laughs> I mean, they're opening all the suitcases. All that shit, okay. And just unpacking all the girls. It's a great show. Yes, I feel it really like is. it has such a huge, respectable following, and I still feel like it's underrated. So It really, I mean, I feel the same way. So thank you so much to Rebecca Sugar and the whole team over there at Cartoon Network who is working on Steven Universe. Rebecca it's Sugar is probably so good. one of like four famous people that if I were to see them in person, I'd instantly cry. Yeah. She might be the only white person that I would f- I feel that way about. I, mean, I think you, when you say that, I would really, I cry? I, really I wouldn't cry. Would I cry if I met Meryl? 
No, I would not cry. I don't think I would cry. I would gag. I would be very I would look at Meryl yeah. like the way I looked at Patti LaBelle when she walked by us at Essence and waved at you. Okay. Yeah, right. Because be that awe. was a moment. I would be like, Hold bitch, did Meryl Streep just lock eyes with yeah, me? Yeah. Right. I would be more in awe than like emotional. But Rebecca Sugar has like done a lot for me emotionally. Yeah. So I think it would bring that out of me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really would, do. As soon as I see her, I'm crying. Right. Uh, so. We also got a letter from Asha who said, can we please talk about how Kivuri low-key predicted Spinel? No, it's not Black it Diamond, up. but it is someone who came back and was like, what the fuck is all this happiness? I'm fucking it up. Oh. And you did say <laughs> there would probably be like a Black Diamond pop up and yeah. be ready to wreck shit. And so I just kind of that was. Would be super cool. Yeah, but. just came in the form of Spinell, who was deeply, deeply hurt. I absolutely did expect that the diamonds had um, some more secrets <laughs> up there in Rebecca's mind right. that she was getting ready to unveil. So I thought Spinell was cool, and I love her like super, um, like old school cartoony flair, yeah. and how where she's met with like a darker version of that. Mm -hmm. And then when she sort of wipes everybody's memory, then she's like this super Disney cartoony, happy go lucky, best friend kind of thing. Right. Oh God. Steven universe is so great. I could talk about this for days. I just feel like the team over there was like, we can't make black diamond a villain. That's not right. White Diamond has to be the worst villain that this show ever saw. I won't call you. Like, listen. <laughs> I think they did that on purpose. I don't listen. Go for it. I think that if when they Blue did... said white can be difficult, that was on purpose. <laughs> they did that on purpose to talk about white people. I bet you anything. If you ask her, she would be like, "Damn sure did. Damn sure did." I feel like. There could be a lot done with a black diamond mm -hmm. that was like forgotten about or whatever. But I mean, there could way. be, but I think it would have to. Well, no, I'm not even going to say that because I don't know. But what I do know is Steven Universe has never disappointed me in any way ever at all. So. Nicki Minaj was on Steven fucking Universe. She was. Like, girl, if you don't fucking remember. If who you... I had a voice part, if I had my own fucking gym. You were a fusion. Oh my God. You were a oh fusion. Oh my God. <laughs> I cannot. Like, come on, girl. Oh no. You know how much I would love to voice any These goddamn niggas. thing on Woo, Steven Universe? I can't. All right, let's move on. But yes, yeah, Steven Universe movie, very great. Go check it out if you have not already. This. He has a neck now. In a Letterman jacket. Yes, our baby's growing up. His He's like voice older. is changing. His voice is deeper. Connie kissed him when she went to space camp. <sighs> oh, Lord, they growing up. Now I feel like what they are really going to get into very soon is Lion's Tea. Okay. Because you know we so. still really don't know a lot about Well, Lion. we they did you watch the shorts that aired after the movie? Oh, yeah. They had a bunch of different well, you know, Lion likes to be in boxes. So maybe that's an intro to I feel like there's a lot to be said about Lion. Yeah. May, I mean, all I know is whatever you give us whenever you're ready for is he it, dead? I will be here to perceive it. No, Lion is real. Everybody can see him. I Because, okay, let me tell you something. I know that there's like a lot of clues that I've missed and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I've watched like commentary from Rebecca and other people on it and been like, oh, I didn't even connect those things. But when... Uh, when Lars got killed, oh yeah, and he turned into he turns pink, and then Steven realized that he could travel through Lars to get through Lion and go back home. Mm -hmm. I thought to myself, well, what's this connection here? Was Lion a lion that died and then Rose brought him back to life? Oh, oh, well, you know what? Maybe, and maybe that's why you can you can like see his body and all that, but only Steven can see like the magic part of him, like go inside his mane and do all that shit. Yeah. Maybe that's Steven that can is. literally hop into him right. and travel. So I don't know if he's like some other sort of being or if I don't, I don't. It's some space fantasy shit. <laughs> one of y'all, if I'm missing something, I know that there are books and comics. I have a lot of the like comics yeah. and stuff like that, but I don't want to, I'm not <laughs> fully, um, I'm not fully aware of what Lion's hold T is. And you know he doesn't pay the girls too much attention. So Not ever, okay? Lion shows up coming. when he feels like it and does things maybe. Even though that episode with the uh, the cassette that came out of his mane oh, was the yeah. first one to make me cry. And still chokes me up to this day. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and watch the series. Like... <laughs> I'm just gonna. It's, Link loves it. It's so... Well, listen, if the girl approves, 
What other Blake endorsement will hear do y'all Steven really Universe need? And literally come in the room and sit down. And I'm talking about a three year old dog. Miss Tina's gonna let it slip one day that Blue Ivy loves Steven Universe, and that's is. gonna be that. All right. So first question this week, or I guess the second technically comes from Carrie, who says, I've been dating this guy for five months and things have been pretty good. Except a few weeks ago, I lost my phone and needed his to call it. I grabbed his phone Mm -hmm. to open for the flashlight, but his pictures were pulled up. And I've never been nosy or the type to look at anyone's shit on their phone, but I just had to scroll. Of course. I get to scrolling to see pictures of his ex of five years. When Mm. I say pictures, I mean there were at least 50 scattered throughout his Mm. phone album. When I asked him about it, he said he's still in the process of deleting them. And I mean, we were (laughs) dating for five years. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm overreacting, but I want to tell him to delete the photos because once you start dating me, then the processing period is over. Remember when we talked about um, coming up with a list of niggas <laughs> in their lives? And, like, the best, like the, the more fun. Maybe you should do that for the right. show. Will I still be respecting myself if I stay in this relationship? I don't want to break up with him, but these pictures need to go. Thanks, Carrie. Girl. <laughs> That ain't nothing to break up with a nigga over. I don't think so either. I don't think it's that deep. And like, honestly, if you have, if you're anything like me and I'm not like the worst of niggas I know when it comes to pictures in my phone. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, where is my phone? (laughs) I mean, I may just be naturally not jealous, but I could not care less if you have pictures of your ex in your phone. What do your ex mean when you hear fucking me? What do, what do I give a shit about that bitch for? Okay. Y'all were together for. I don't know what I do with my phone. But they were together for five years, and you said there's about fifty pictures scattered throughout the photo album. A lot of people don't go did through you scroll and delete to the pictures. Top? Like that's what I'm saying. She must have went through that shit. Right, that's what I was trying to get to. I don't know how many photos I have on my phone, but I know that it is oh. over two thousand. I just deleted six thousand off of one phone. And See, then, I need to get to bitch. Back to I have twelve thousand in this one. See, and I, I told you, I'm not even like that. Insane. Deep. Some of my very good friends, I'm like, girl, that got to be half your data. Yeah. I I mean, I have pictures from like 2006 on this phone. Right. I have like pictures on my phone today from the first iPhone I ever had, which was the first iPhone. <laughs> right. So, Same. you know, if you, you know, I don't know. They, not everybody has the will to go through 12,000. I know I don't. It's definitely pictures like. of my exes on this phone. That don't mean I don't give a I damn said about this shit none last of them week. If you feel the urge to go, you know what I'm saying, around the, uh, a block or take a long walk through the park after dark and your nigga's phone or <laughs> laptop or wherever the fuck else yep. odds are you should probably just hit the door because what you're looking for is probably going to be in there or something else is probably going to be in there and you are very clearly not secure enough to handle that right so you should just go on ahead and, fr- and say fuck it you don't even need to go through the phone but I don't think you're I, I don't think you Carrie are actually seeing anything that is justifying this reaction i think this is your own insecurity about the matter and you may be young i feel like i definitely would have cared more in my early 20s than i would now (laughs) right so part of this is just grow me talking yeah i don't as long as he's not like i'm sure if you went through his pictures you went through his call log and his texts and all that so as long he's not texting the bitch he's not calling the bitch he's not emailing the bitch I, i just don't see anything to be worried about I wouldn't issue a no ultimatum over this. If I were you, I would just try to get over the jealousy Girl, there. Get over it. Like, yeah. you ain't leaving that nigga. You already said it. Dick to bomb, more than likely. <laughs> and you wanted to go through here and find an issue. Y'all got to stop doing that shit. Like, Please. Stop it. Don't make an issue out of things that don't need to be. Stop making a, a big deal. <laughs> Out of the chicken wings, because I got big meals and I got chicken wings. Everything asking for. I didn't make up that. I don't remember who came up with that. How dare you? Somebody came up with that. Who? I don't know. I think it was somebody on YouTube. No, it wasn't me. One of you niggas came up with. Sound like some dust and shit. Stop making a big meal out of the chicken wings. It was either dust or XD. Oh, you know, you're talking about somebody on the internet or no, one I'm of our about friends? One of us. So then it was, it was dust and XD. Maybe Asante. Whatever. I don't know. Well, anyway, it don't matter. I did so, I, oh, I totally came up with that. Nigga, I really should hit you. <laughs> did I? I think I said that in a YouTube video. Fuck, I don't care. Look Listen. at you. <laughs> Stop it. Look at you. Stop it. 
If anything, bitch, just delete the goddamn photos and put some pussy pics in there and <laughs> fucking move on. Like, Yeah, I don't think this is a reason to trip, Carrie. Um, but best of luck to you and your man. Next question comes from Donna, who says, My best friend from college was having an affair with this guy from her job, and it's been a shit show ever since. She explained that her reason for cheating was because her husband stepped out with a girl they had been having threesomes with. Is this the... Um Lyrica Anderson A1 story? <laughs> it might be shit. I'm not caught up on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. So. Maybe an episode behind. I never questioned whether her husband really cheated, but I told her on plenty of occasions that she should leave her husband if she wasn't happy. Mm. Her husband was not too fond of me, though, because she lied to him, saying that I introduced her to some nigga and had them exchange numbers. Oh! Well, you know what? I don't think I'd care. I took that L because I'm loyal. <laughs> right. And I was pegged as the wild, single, bad influence friend. Oh, now we've done And too because much. she was my friend, I let it slide. A few months later, she got pregnant and I had <laughs> some <gasps> raised eyebrows because I knew she was having unprotected sex with both men. Uh, even her side nigga questioned if the baby was his and she assured me it was her husband. So <sighs> I went along with it. She ended up losing the baby and I knew this was a very difficult time for her. Oh, no. But she still continued to see and sleep with her side man. Now comes in the fuckery. Now comes that in the That is the line that sent me out, okay? I'm like, wait a minute. This whole first paragraph was the warm-up? <laughs> well, girl. All right. Well. One random day, all the guilt and bullshit caught up to her and she snapped. She had a paranoia attack, called me at work, and said that her husband hired private detectives and went to extensive lengths to catch her up. So she confessed. She was freaking out about telling her husband everything and wanted me to meet her in person so we could talk since her husband presumably <laughs> tapped both our phones. <laughs> I met her in person and six hours of her paranoia attacks ensued. I had to call off of work because I was honestly watching my best friend have a mental breakdown in front of my I'm very so eyes. You are a horrible person. <laughs> I just pictured a nigga with like... <laughs> With like waves in the shape of <laughs> <laughs> like coming down on a, on a rope like na 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 nigga na I mean bitch how your man gonna tap my phone yours maybe but right. mine <laughs> like, <laughs> this is gonna work for the Pentagon yeah she was losing <laughs> That is funny. Woo, it was so hard to watch because she was talking to herself, having irrational, incoherent thoughts, and I was extremely worried and did not want to leave her, so I waited until her mother arrived before I went home. To make a long story short, two days later, I heard from one of our mutual friends that she attempted to hurt herself three times before her mother and husband admitted her to the hospital. Oh, Lord. Her husband reached out to me since I was the last person to have contact with her before her meltdown, and he begged for me to tell him the whole truth about what was going on with his wife. Because I believe this to be a matter of life and death, and I assume that when she confessed, she actually told... And I assume that when he co when she confessed to him, oh my god, that she actually told the truth. I told him everything that I knew, and it turns out that she didn't tell him much of anything. Of course, she didn't. <laughs> she lied about how long the affair was going on, about <gasps> the baby, everything. <gasps> now my friend won't speak to me. <gasps> <laughs> Sorry. Now my friend won't speak to me, and feels like I'm an ain't shit friend for telling. Am I wrong for what? telling her husband, given the circumstances, did I contribute in ruining their marriage? Hell no! Please help. I'm assuming this ruining their marriage thing is something she said to you. Right. Um, please help Donna. Donna, for clarity, um, what your friend is going through is incredibly sad. And um, I would suggest that she sit down with somebody at some point, I feel like y'all are going to say this is sounds like a broken record, but like I sincerely like yeah. some of y'all could do with maybe two or three sessions. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, the, some of I really believe everybody should be in therapy or have been in therapy. Very like, many really of us it. at least. The overwhelming majority of us over the age of like 10 <laughs> need to be a in therapy. A lot of you might be supremely shocked yeah. at how much a difference it makes sitting yeah. down with someone who really knows what they're talking about and who is going to listen to you yeah. and not cut you off and really digest what you're saying and give you a trained, educated point of view. Yeah. A lot of you need that and you just be speaking to your best friend or your mom or your auntie about it and they're going to tell you the same shit that they told you last three times and you ain't going to follow what they said any goddamn way. Right. But anyways, obviously what your friend... Um, is going through is real deep and very serious and I hope that she's okay. 
Um, but at the same time, it is incredibly unfair for you to take the blame for ruining her marriage or for saying too much. Like if mama's in the hospital mm-hmm. or whatever because she hurt herself yeah. and this nigga's calling like what happened, what happened? That severity, yeah. I'm telling you what I know. Right. Like I'm not even thinking at that point, let me try and dress it up and not say too much. Like if you like... In the hospital? Hospitalized from trying to kill yourself, sis. Like, I'm just going to go out and and keep it it a buck. So that's like, I think it also is, it it makes it like very clear what kind of friend you are for even thinking this. Because a bitch like me would just hold on to that. And when you're better, come to you and be like, now, do you really feel like I ruined your marriage, sis? Because... You know that I was terrified, right? And like, like, what did you? Right. Plus, yeah. I didn't take my married pussy and go put it nowhere, so <laughs> <Listen>. I didn't. <laughs> like, I don't know what. Right. I. Mm, well, I mean, I definitely don't think that you are a bad friend or wrong for telling her right. husband because, Come like, on. Kifiri said, it is not like you know. He called her phone three times and she didn't answer. But then she texted you and was like, I'm out with my side niggas. So, you know, if Byron called, tell him (laughs) I'm getting my nails done or whatever. Like, it wasn't something like that. It was something where they had to let you know that she was hospitalized because she tried to fucking hurt herself. Like behind this, behind this situation. And your husband is coming to me like, please tell me what's what going, on. going so like, on. I'm going to tell him, girl, even if he previously thought all this bad shit about me again, because you lied on me and I took the L because I'm that type of bitch. I did it anyway. Like, I'm going to tell him because this is more important. Like your mental health and your physical well-being are more important than all this other shit. Come on girl. Now. So, yes, I am going to tell him. And if you think I'm a bad friend for that, then you might really want to reevaluate wait what you think a friend should be and period friends want you to stay alive friends want to do everything they can to for you to be a happy healthy person like mama i'm sitting here rocking with you on the sidelines while you cheating on this nigga for whatever your reasons may be rocking out saying what i gotta say and things like that but when it comes to like my bitch might die or it's like even Whatever, however it happened or whatever landed her in the hospital, yeah. that severity, I'm not thinking about the arrest exactly. of that shit. Because I'm it's not. just, whatever he knows, this nigga could, you know, go away tomorrow at the end of the day. Right. You are my friend and I want you to live and be happy. And if that means that this nigga, and you obviously you and this nigga, aside from this hospital situation, have your own issues and maybe don't even need to fucking be together. But... I'm not about to sit up here and and soak up all of this guilt and blame and stuff like that for giving a fuck about you and being honest. Especially, let's not forget that she lied to you when she said that she confessed to her husband. Thank you. You thought he knew all this shit. Exactly. You thought you was going to be filling in maybe a couple of small details. Turns out you had to give this man most of the story. Again, that is her fault. She acted like you was on fucking Law & Order and they offered you a double Whopper with cheese and (laughs) shit. You a snitch. It's like, you told me the nigga knew. Like, what the fuck? I didn't even know I was snitching, girl. So, yeah, I would... I would say those things to her in whatever way you think she can receive them the best, but... Yeah, I'd, I'd wait a taste. Yeah, and, and it, then if it's that. true that her husband stepped out on her with somebody that they were having a threesome with and then she was stepping out on him, maybe they just need to not be together, but that's for them to work maybe through. Maybe they don't need to be together, <laughs> or maybe you can do the try, take the tried and true method, which is a little bit of liquor and a tight dress and free before 12. <laughs> Like, everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to shit on nobody, but sis, like, we don't have to be doing all this. Or at least if you're going to shit on the nigga, not give a fuck about it. You know what I mean? Like, let's stand strong in it. And that's what you're going to do as my friend. You know what I'm saying? Because I have friends that cheat. And I mind my business. I I don't don't. agree with their actions. (laughs) Honey, if you My friends do not. Well, none of of my female friends cheat. (laughs) (laughs) 
I can't say the same. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> they don't cheat anymore. Okay. They don't cheat anymore. Okay, that's solid. Maybe the ones <laughs> I'm thinking of. Not that they never don't have, because them hoes be like, hell yes, used to cheat on everybody. I'm, in fact, I don't know that I have a friend that I'm aware is currently cheating, but I definitely have friends who throughout our friendship have cheated yeah. and, and involved me sometimes in it. Like, I need you to post this. So, you know what I mean? And I'm like, cool. You know, because I don't give a fuck about that nigga, bitch. Like, <laughs> Like, he ain't my friend. I, right. You my friend. And I always keep my distance. When they're around, oh, what's up? Dap, dap. You feeling and all I right? And moving. that is the finish line. So that you understand. I don't need to be friends with you, sis. <laughs> ever. Okay? Not because ever. what you're not about to do if this shit ends is call me and ask me no questions. Yeah. I'm team this. Okay? In I'm, EJ Johnson's words, I am team this. Yes. So... I might take your number after y'all have been together for a year for emergency purposes only. For emergency purposes only. But and what, that's it. <laughs> no. And I'll tell you to your face. Yes. That if you break up, I'm deleting. I don't have your number anymore. Understand this about me. If you text me, you're getting who's this. Yes. You can get anything. Right. So you need to have a really real conversation with her. Lay all this stuff out. Um, and hopefully she can see that you were truly acting in her best, her interest. best interest. For real. And in the interest of y'all's friendship. Like you always have. Like, again, you have. To, I think it's important to stress that you did not know you were snitching. Because she lied to you. But past that shit, like, my nigga, like, do you see the situation that you're in and do you know that I'm your friend and give a fuck? And if she can't, like, really understand that, then I would definitely put her on ice. If not, walk away altogether. Because honestly, some people look to motherfuckers as that out. You know, like, some people, Mm -hmm. like, fully will attach themselves to... And I know that y'all have been friends or whatever, so I'm not saying that's the basis of this friendship. Right. But I'm saying that sometimes people know that they can look to you for the, like... You know, to, like, aid them in whatever their mess is. Mm -hmm. And they don't consider the fact that, like, you're roping yourself into some mess that doesn't involve you but fully affects you as well. And motherfuckers don't respect that when it gets spicy for you, too. It's like, like I said... When motherfuckers call me and be like, so I need you to hop up on on Twitter or Facebook and post this because we are fully at uh, at Fridays right now. I'm like, done. You know what I mean? But if niggas are popping up at my house or calling me and shit like this, it gets to the point that I need you to respect the fact that like... When it gets to the point of somebody's in the hospital, girl... When it gets down to your life, I'm going to choose, like, your life. And you're not about to sit up here and, and be pissed about me because I chose yeah. your life first. Right. Because at the end of the day, this nigga can be feet. And, right. like, and even cares? if you're so mad that you don't want to be my friend no more, I'll sleep just fine at night knowing that I chose to do what was best for you. Thank you. Not missing a single Z. I'll be all right. And, and you know, hopefully she'll work through her shit and then come back and apologize profusely for that. Thank but, you. Yeah, she needs some help there. Absolutely. And, um... You deserve to not feel guilty. All right. Last question comes from Marlena, who says, I've worked government jobs my whole adult life that don't allow me to partake in pot use. But my partner who moved in with me this spring has smoked for years. Oh, out of respect for my job. (laughs) Out of respect for my job. He hasn't smoked since we lived together or so he says. I have a lot of fruit and tree allergies, which is relevant. And these past few weeks, I've been getting hives and a sore, scratchy throat and had no idea what could be causing them. I even asked him if he had eaten an apple, which is one of my allergens, before kissing me. Damn, I love apples. Right? Today, I realized I I had hives again, and I looked up plants in the same family as the ones I know I'm allergic to, and bam, marijuana is the same family of plants as apples, plums, pears, peaches, and apricots. Can you imagine being (laughs) allergic to weed, bruh? Not just allergic to weed, but allergic to apples, plums, pears. Is peaches like top two fruit and apricots all of which send this woman into anaphylaxis my allergies are so serious i can't even <laughs> touch the fruits i'm so allergic sorry. to can't even touch them and i have epi stashed everywhere including home car work my mama's house everywhere thankfully like my main allergy is is shellfish which isn't just all up in everything so like people who are just like peanuts and shit yeah my word like the hassle that must be <laughs> peanuts are every goddamn in way. everything everything 
everywhere. And when you are on an airplane and they say, we can't serve peanuts this flight, everybody is secretly silent. Well, not everybody. I don't care because I'm not eating the peanuts. But people get pissed when they are denied access to peanuts because mm. somebody around them has an Which allergy. Like, people cannot control that, girl. Be real. Stupid. You think that they love having any kind of fucking allergy, bro? Come the right. fuck on now. All right. Back to Marlena. Um, so she has EpiPen stashed all over the place. And then she says this. These past few weeks, he has also been chilling at his work friend's place for a few hours after work, playing video games and mm-hmm. coming home smelling like weed. Mm-hmm. His car smells strongly of weed. It's on his hands and beard. And he says it's just there while they smoke and he isn't actually partaking. Okay. I don't really believe that there is so much smoke on him that is giving me hives from secondhand exposure. I don't want to ask him to give up his friends, though. We moved to a new city together, and I have friends at work that I knew at my last job, but these guys are pretty much his only people here besides me. I also don't want him to think it's me trying to get rid of his weed-smoking friends because of my security clearance at work, but damn, I am tired of itching. How can this be resolved? (laughs) Love, itchy bitch. (laughs) I called her Marlena, but she gave herself a name. I know how that fucking... Child, being itchy any kind of way is just the fucking worst. Man. Um, and she put here at the end, like, she always thought she was going to be able to get high after she left her government job. And wouldn't you? Now realizes she's allergic. <laughs> that blows. Allergic to weed. Speaking of blow, that's probably what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> You could pick up a coke habit, habit like everybody else in high level government. What else is there out here? Um, so here's the thing. I feel like for me, um, as a weed ingesting individual, but I, like even before I I smoked weed because I didn't really start um, fucking with marijuana until I was maybe when when how old was I? I moved here twenty five. Yeah, I didn't smoke weed reg- regularly till I moved to New York. Yeah, I've occasionally touched it every so often like really spaced out apart before that but I wasn't like buying my own weed and on a regular shit until I moved here and I was about 25 right so I had smoked weed like three times before I moved to New York (laughs) it never happened and uh, now you see where we are (laughs) um (laughs) now you make tinctures bitch (laughs) so (laughs) like um but like as someone who I would say is not a square I let people, you know, kick it. My thing is like, you know, okay, for for instance, I'm allergic to shellfish um, or crustaceans specifically. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what shrimp tastes like. Never had lobster. Only had crab once. I hate it. Like, because not only do I not remember what shrimp tastes like, I remember that shrimp used to be my <laughs> shit. It used to be my shit. Shit, like nigga, when my mama used to you make curry it. shrimp or any kind of fucking shrimp, I used to be like, fuck it, like wow. hype. Shrimp used to be my shit. Now I don't remember what the fuck it tastes like because the last time I had it, I was like eight or nine. That's look, I had bang bang shrimp for dinner last <laughs> the other day, <laughs> like, and it's cool. Like I think probably it's for the best that I don't remember what it tastes like. Yeah, it is because it's right. just like okay, well I know that I'm missing something that looks yeah. good and I know tastes good, <laughs> yeah. but I can't really like hate. <laughs> what I'm going through because yeah. I don't remember what to say anyways I literally had an entire bowl of shrimp for dinner but yeah I wouldn't be like you know uh, you can't order that or da 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 I I the only thing that would affect me like when I was younger and I think that as I've gotten older maybe my sensitivity to it has um, weakened a bit because I remember when I was a little bit past the realization that I had this allergy we went to like a what are those things? We went to like a hibachi place. I don't remember which one it is. Mm-hmm. But like one of those hibachi chains. And they were making shrimp on the thing. And I had a reaction just from like the steam or smoke arising from them cooking the shrimp. Mm-hmm. Whereas now it doesn't bother me as much. So I feel like what I'm trying to say is for her, if it isn't literally affecting my personal health, him, invo- him smoking weed or being around weed or whatever, I'll just let him live. You know what I mean? If he's yeah. actually smoking weed, then I don't think that I would give a fuck unless I'm literally getting hives because of it. And I guess that's what she's alluding to. Is yeah. she certain? Not certain, but it's happened in the past few weeks. It started in the past few weeks. And in the past few weeks is when he started hanging out with these people. So it really seems like this is probably her marijuana allergy. I would up. probably say to him, do me a favor. Um, take a week or two off 
of these um, activities Mm -hmm. and let's see. You know what I mean? Because it's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell with with allergies and reactions of your body sometimes where things are coming from. Right. Um, I would tell him to just like set back for a second and see if you're affected differently. And then... If like once you're absolutely certain that you, your health, Mm -hmm. your comfort physically is being affected by his surroundings, Mm -hmm. then, yeah, he has to do something about it. But if the niggas just come home smoking, smelling like weed or whatever, and that's irksome to you or you feel like you are being affected to that, Mm -hmm. I would say just find out for sure so you know what to do. Yeah. I uh, I don't want to stop nobody's good time. (laughs) I don't think and I don't think you have to stop his good time and I don't think you have to break out in hives either. Like. I think there's a middle ground here. When I dated people in the past who smoked cigarettes, like after I quit, I, so after I quit, I truly began to despise the smell. Like I I hate it. it. (laughs) I hate it. I just really, it's like, anyway. Yeah. So my rule was, I can't stop you from smoking cigarettes. All I can do is break up with you if I hate it that much. True. But instead, I will institute this rule where you can go smoke your cigarette. Just understand that when you come back in this house, you will be taking a shower and brushing your teeth is before that, you come anywhere near is me. Is that asking too much? It's not, because I hate that fucking smell. Thanks. And this lady is not even a smell issue. It's a bitch. I'm breaking out in hives. And so I would say, listen, it's fine that you sit in there while they're smoking. It's fine if you smoke. But like, I'm going to need you to brush your teeth, gargle, get in the shower, because I'm really allergic to this shit. And I feel like... If he really cares about you, he will gladly do that. Because I have yeah. never had a nigga argue with me about that. They'd be so glad that oh, you let man. them smoke. <laughs> They'd be so glad that I just let them smoke. They're like, literally, any kind <laughs> well, Have you had to argue with men about this? Yeah. Oh, no. Mm. Not like full-fledged argue, but I've had to say more about it than I feel like I needed to. Either way, Ooh, yeah. I think that what you're suggesting is actually way better. Because it's like, if he does do that, if he's like, you know what... I was around weed, smoked weed, whatever the fuck it is that he's doing. And he fully showers, gargles, brushes his teeth or whatnot. That's almost like taking a break from it anyway. You know what I mean? (laughs) If he's just not coming around you with weed all over him, then you can still test if there's a difference and be like, okay, so now I know after a week or two weeks of you doing et cetera, et cetera, that this is what has been causing it. And now you know not to come over here without scrubbing your goddamn mouth. Well, they live together now. So it's more like when you come in the house from hanging out with them, you don't have to go take a shower because your wife has these really severe allergies or fiance, girlfriend, whatever y'all are to each other. Like that's just... I really feel like that's basic decency because it's not even that you just hate the smell like it was for me. It was, bitch, like my health is at risk. Exactly. So I think he should be more than happy to do that. If he can't do that, then girl. And then he gets to go back to smoking weed. He don't have to pretend that he ain't been doing it. Right. (laughs) Because the nigga's hands and beard and car smell like weed, sir. Like, who are you? Who the fuck are you feeling? Oh, it wasn't. It, that, that was my friend. At the bare minimum, he should be brushing his teeth before he kisses you. That's probably where the real problem lies. But definitely, I think a full shower as well. I mean, if you're so allergic, you can't even fucking touch an apple. Man, who knows? Yeah. So then, but, yeah. and he knows that you have very severe allergies. And so this is part of that. So I would tell him, you know, guess what? Allergic to weed as well. So. We'll have to figure something out. So what are we going to do now? Yeah, and this is very reasonable. I think he'll go along with it, and um, I wish you guys the very best. All right, that wraps up the questions this week. Send yours to asktheread at gmail.com. We'll be right back. Hey, y'all. So listen, when you're selling anything online, sometimes it can be a real pain in the the A double snakes. What? Patootie? Patootie's a nice one. <laughs> it can be a, an, an annoyance. Yes. And a time consuming one at that, trying to get those orders out of the door and into the laps of your customers on time. That's why you should use ShipStation.com. It's the fastest, easiest, most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. We use ShipStation.com uh, to send out our merch. Yep. All of the hoodies and leggings and fun things that y'all support us by buying. Um, so that's, you know, our own personal way of getting our orders out to you. So ShipStation helps you get orders out quickly, save money on shipping costs, and keep customers happy no matter what you're selling or where you're selling it, whether it's 
Amazon, Etsy, if you have your own website made by someone else or whatever, ShipStation can bring all your orders into one simple interface that you can manage from any device, even from your cell phone. If you, you know, just have to pump the block and hit the train or get in your car and drive what? around if you're that kind of girl. And ShipStation works with all of the major carriers, including USPS, FedEx, UPS, and even Amazon Fulfillment. So you can compare and choose the best one that works for you. Yep. And you can try ShipStation free for 60 days when you use our promo code mm-hmm. READ. That's R-E-A-D. There's absolutely no risk. You can start your free trial without even entering your credit card information. Just go to ShipStation.com. Click the mic at the top of the page and type in read. ShipStation.com. Promo code READ. With ShipStation, you can make ship happen. All right. Let's move on. Speaking of making your own website, you can turn your dreams, passions, ideas, fancies into a real Mm -hmm. website with Squarespace. They make it very, very, very easy to launch a website. Let me tell you something. I've been into this website building, formatting thing for many, many years at this point. And Squarespace is legitimately the easiest experience I've had with building a website. (laughs) And you can get web, you can get templates for your websites that look really good and fit whatever your desire may be and things of that nature. Not to mention, if you really are just like, I don't get it, or I don't care, or I don't know, help. Squarespace literally has a customer support service that is available 24-7. You can talk to them all kinds of ways. If you do need help with a couple of clicks, you've got an e-commerce functionality. So if you're selling products or things like that online, you can use that. And they also have analytics that will help you grow and monitor your site and how it's doing all in real time. So go over to squarespace.com right now and start something new. Make something fancy. Yeah, you really should. I was actually updating our website for the first time in an incredibly long time a few weeks ago. And I thought, wow, I should probably do this with my same personal website. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I just brought the whole um, hosting and everything over to Squarespace and just threw something up in like 30 minutes. And it absolutely will do. And that's like, like they could not make it any easier. So go to squarespace.com slash read for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code read. Wait a minute. I didn't even use my own. Damn, off. you know what? I forgot to do it. Too. Don't be dumb like me. Use the offer code READ to save 10% off your first purchase of a site or domain. Again, squarespace.com slash READ. Offer code READ. Let them know we sent you. All right, let's wrap up the show. We are back. It is time for the read. It is. So I have four quick things to say. So we'll be done tomorrow. That's right. Um. <clears throat> now, hopefully, I can get through this very quickly. So first and foremost, they're very like mini reads. <laughs> so I saw um, via Tens magazine they posted this. Uh, I just clip took mine off on <laughs> that thing. Oh right, this microphone thing. Yeah, I'm confused. Anyways, so they posted Tens posted this clip from a ball here. I believe it was here in the city. Um, That, you know, the gays and gals were having typical ballroom fun. And apparently, I guess because it's fashion week, a lot of the girls are in town. A lot of the famous girls and famous adjacents or whatnot. They posted a clip of someone who the commentator was telling to step down from the seats up on the stage. Because they were reserved for people who are referred to as legends in the ballroom scene. Now, again, y'all have had access to so much information, documentaries. Sh- like, I don't... I mean, you can TV literally shows. just watch <laughs> or read or do anything. But <clears throat> in the ballroom scene was literally created by the community to give ourselves a platform where we could shine in the way that we often were not permitted to um, in society or whatnot. Yeah. So people are legit legends of the community. You're talking about people who have coined phrases that you use right now that your your gay daddies and gay mommies <laughs> use and shit like that. We're talking about like looks and dances and stuff like that, whatever. So I heard it was um, Yannis Marshall or Yannis Marshall. I don't know how to say his name. He's the French queen with Debbie and Heels all the time and has been on a couple of shows trying to Vogue uh, unsuccessfully and things like that. But anyway, this white queen apparently is the one who was Kissing. at this fucking, um, who was at the ball Mm-mm. and decided that he wanted to sit behind the judge's table oh, where the no. legend sit and was told to step down and apparently had a tizzy about it. Whether it's him or not is irrelevant. I just wanted to say... <clears throat> Respect the spaces that you're in. And this is why white gays, I be on y'all net yeah. every fucking chance I get. 
And I don't give a fuck because I feel like a lot of white gay men mm-hmm. still have the privilege of white entitlement and the like oblivious nature that it's usually paired with. Mm-hmm. But then they also get to do this thing of like homophobic victimhood. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, loads of women love and support and will fight tooth and nail for the gays. Mm-hmm. They go to brunch with these white women. <laughs> well, they go to 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 Saks and to Burdines. <laughs> <These white women. laughs> When's the last time you saw a bird? Um, and so they are, you know, they're the ones who are going to yell at Kevin Hart about his tweets from 2009 <laughs> and say, how <laughs> how dare you? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, white, a lot of white gays get to, like, benefit from all of the popularity and the, like, major moments and things of pop culture that that the queer community has created. But it's, like, these same gay, lesbian, trans, queer people that you are yeah. shitting on or acting like you're better than are the ones that created all of the... Po- everything that yeah. you like about gay shit, everything that you've heard from your favorite gays, I don't care if they are male, female, non-binary, trans, black, white, green, yellow, indigo, People, queer people of color mm-hmm. are the ones that literally made... All of your favorite things about gay <laughs> shit. But white gays are the ones who get to like drive the boat in Omega the Stallion and really get to like stand Love. in all of that shit. And just I feel like they get they feel like they can just do whatever the fuck they want to. And nobody should be able to say what they want to, to want to them because it's yeah. like, oh well, I'm gay and my life is hard. Bitch, you're at a ball, girl. <laughs> You're talking to a room full of gays. Get and off trans the and stage. Non-conforming people, bitch. We've made it clear. You're not that girl. Get your ass up and go where you belong. Move. To the sidelines and watch. Move. Some bitches who know what they're doing. This is uh, designated for those in the community who have literally bled and yeah. sweat and yeah. cried. And a couple of them may have boosted to like <laughs> change the culture And give you the shit that you are popular for. Yes, yes, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So act like you got some fucking common sense because this Mm -hmm. is not like Taylor Swift's corner at the VMAs. Yeah. This is a whole different ball game, girl. (laughs) And you're going to respect the fucking hierarchy that works within here. Yeah. Period. Because one thing I can tell you about the gays, the black and and Latinx gays in the ballroom, they don't care. You do not want to do it. They don't care about none of that. Absolutely not. At all. Who are you? You can be famous over there in Whitelandia. That's That's fine. That's nice. Over here, you're not shit to us. We don't care about that. Carry your ass on in the back with everybody Wear else who's a spectator. We don't know you, don't know girl. You. Get <laughs> up and move. move. And honestly, how dare you go into a black space and try to assert yourself in like you have any kind of dominance over these people? In any way. Sweetie, <laughs> the lack of tact that that has I just don't understand who the fuck raised you I'm and I really you. doubt you would walk into white spaces like that and just put your dick on the table like you was absolutely that motherfucker that's what I'm saying even I feel like black and Latinx celebrities or influencers or whatever who would have been in the same space I feel like they don't even need to know too much about ballroom culture and like just so you know like last ball that I had been to was like the maybe the latex ball last year and prior to that I didn't freak with them so I'm not speaking from like the perspective of someone who was at all of them and knows all of the names and stuff like that I just have an understanding and like I think I am aware of enough of the history behind it to talk about what I'm saying and at the same time I feel like Black, you know, like the gays of color would know better and do better in the same situation. Absolutely, it's only y'all motherfuckers who be walking in here and be like, "Oh, what's the problem? Get your ass off the goddamn stage and shut up." I would literally never walk into a ball and presume to do anything other than keep my black ass in the back somewhere, shut the fuck up, and watch the show. Literally, would not do any goddamn thing. Like, else. Are you dumb? Like it's a privilege and an honor that y'all even let me be in your space. All you about to do anyway is take a whole bunch of notes to run back to fucking Lady Gaga <laughs> and Woo! Katy Perry and whoever Shit! the fuck else with well, for their next video, so they can act like they don't know where it got it came from anyway. Oh, and girls. we know that. Uh-huh. So move. 
At the very least. You're not sitting up here move. where we put our respected legends. You can go in the back and take your notes from over yonder. We don't give a fuck if you like dick too, sis. <laughs> move it. A whole lot of people like dick. And what else? What has that ever done for anybody? <laughs> <laughs> what has it ever done? Probably six, 60, no, 70% of the planet like dick, probably. Probably so. I'm telling, I, honestly, my TED Talk is going to be about worldwide dick obsession. <laughs> Even straight men are obsessed with dick and I mean, they don't even know. Lesbians love dick too, just not or- organic dick. Right. But dick. Everyone <laughs> is enamored with dick. Yes. And I'm telling you, I am going to unpack that conversation <laughs> one day. You girls are going to get In it. this essay, I will. Um. Okay, so number two, I wanted to say, oh, this was real fast and this is what I was talking about when I was discussing Nicki Minaj and her um, uh, troubles with motherfuckers talking about her on the internet. Oh, For yeah. me... I just want to let you, a lot of you know who I may have followed once upon a time on on Twitter or Instagram or wherever else. If I'm not following you anymore, it's likely because um, you repost a lot of fuck shit and a lot of trolling <laughs> um, and ignorance that I just don't want to be witness to. Mm-hmm. It isn't anything personal. I wish you the honest best in your life. I just don't need to get on Twitter every motherfucking day and look at, you know, what horrible things niggas are saying about women or what horrible things women are saying about gays or trans people what horrible things white people are saying about black people like I don't need and the the thing about it is there are some uh, conversations I understand engaging and then there is just clear fucking bullshit from somebody that just wants your attention that is like on their break at whatever fucking job that the rest of us all have like that doesn't need to be highlighted at all there's so much fucking bullshit that y'all engage with because you want to and you like mess and you pretending that you fucking don't and that's okay do whatever works for you sis (laughs) I don't want to see that so the numbers are dwindling. I'm d- I don't want to be a part of it. Um, but that don't mean if I see you in the street, I won't dap you up, bitch. I just don't give a fuck about your timeline. I don't want to see it. That's two. Three. It Chapter two is out. I want to remind a lot of you. I feel like I discussed this possibly for the first It or maybe some other scary movie. Stephen King's It is literally about a celestial being that murders and mutilates children. Please don't subject children to this film i've seen it okay and without spoiling anything it's not for kids you know besides the fact that it's obviously an r-rated horror movie the nigga eats kids oh no they're not holding back on that (laughs) i know a lot of you find a a very odd pleasure in terrorizing children with scary things there is like a, a there is an extra hot section of hell for you bitches yeah. and I don't understand why you do it but I would just like for you to think twice before you take your baby Please. with y'all to go <laughs> to see it besides the fact that we don't want to hear crying while the rest of us are trying to watch the movie that we pay 15 fucking dollars or whatever for that's odd it's weird it's strange it's fucked up and it's probably just as evil as, as Pennywise is to be subjecting children to the images of a demon clown that literally eats children Lord. on cam. Last but not least, I wanted to cover something I believe I forgot to mention my previous read about people who were upset that the developers for the video game Cyber 2077 were removing the gender options in the character creator option. Just really quick recap. Um, the company CD Projekt Red had been dealing with some... Um, backlash for some transphobic things they were a part of and they decided whether it's because of that as a result of that or just separate they decided to remove the feature that allows you to create um that allows you to choose your character's gender right it doesn't mean that your character is trans by default it just means that you don't (laughs) pick male or female you pick a, a kind of voice one that may sound more typically male or typically female. And then the rest, you just do whatever. So you can literally still make the same character that you thought that you were going to make initially. Mm. You just won't pick boy girl. That's it. I think I forgot last week to mention that in most games, because I play damn near all of them, (laughs) most games that give you the character creation feature, you will be referred to as they anyway. 
Because a lot of developers don't create or don't go to the bother of like creating two separate lines of dialogues oh, yeah. to be programmed to know whether you chose a male or female right. character. Because fuck that. Because fuck all of that. <laughs> like, do you know how long it takes to make a fucking video we have game games anyway? games to make, right. So That's why you can't customize Link. The character... <laughs> the character... In um in Cyberpunk is going to be named V. Like that's the character's name, regardless of the gender, race, whatever that you choose. Okay. Right? So odds are in this game that y'all are pissed off about anyway, they're just gonna refer to your fucking character as they and V <laughs> anyway. So it's almost like the motherfucking character don't have no gender, as it's been in every fucking game, even the <laughs> ones that make you choose male, female. This isn't anything to be mad about. You just hate that people are being included in things that you like. People that you hate, that you are disgusted by. Yeah. And that's what you need to be dealing with. Not the fact that somebody took out a feature in a game that really makes no fucking difference anyway. I'm done. That's it. I feel yeah. like I did a great job in terms of time. I mean, you you went through them last three. You did. You sped right through those. But you, I'm just saying, <laughs> you spent your time on that first one. But as you should have, it they really need to be told. And like you need to understand, listen with your listening ears to that shit right the there. Girls love award seasons and oh, you know fashion they do. weeks to come out and, and appropriate all kinds of culture. And we're just not doing it. At least the gays are not going, not the ballroom gays. <laughs> no. And thank God for <laughs> that. Because they tell you about yourself <laughs> For a living. Have you not watched Pose? Didn't we tell you to get your ass up? Like, we're not going to say it again, girl. Have get you not up. seen Pray Tell dragging? <laughs> <laughs> like, I know. I don't get that, but okay. Anyway, I'm done. All right. Well, um, so I also just have a really quick story to tell. It's not even really a read. It's just another tale from Gentrified Harlem. Alrighty. And, you know, really driving me crazy. Can't to wait. the point where I feel like, at this point, I might as well move to a traditionally white neighborhood. So at least when white people get on my nerves, I can say to myself, this is what you get for moving to their house. But like when y'all do it in Harlem, it irritates me to another level because it's like you're already. Anyway, it don't matter. I'll tell you, you're going to want to move back to Harlem. Damn. OK, you know what? Then I'm getting a brownstone. I'm, I, I feel I'm getting like a brownstone. I honestly think that's your best. I'm, it really is. Yeah. OK. All right. You know what? Thank you. You just saved me a yeah, lot I'm of money. Tell, you not going to like it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so. I cannot do it. So last night I started a load of laundry. When I went down to the laundry room, it was completely empty. Oh god. No one using any machines at all, no clothes in there at all. Oh my god. So I took up two washers with my clothes. <sighs> the wash site they on the exact same wash cycle. It ends in 37 minutes. I set my Apple Watch, not Apple Watch, my phone alarm for 36 minutes because I give myself a minute of travel time. That's just smart. That's just what I do. I go back upstairs. Now, this is the way I've done laundry since I have moved to, to New York and had a building where I had laundry right. service. Uh, the timer goes off. I get my um, laundry basket. I go back downstairs. It takes a while for the elevator to come. But I make my way back to the basement. And there is now a white woman in the laundry room. <sighs> And now I see why the elevator took so long to come because it was carrying her trifling ass downstairs. One of my washers says zero minutes. The other one says one minute and it's doing that final mm. thing. Meaning that when she brought her trifling ass into this laundry room, she knew that the clothes had not been sitting there for any significant period of time. I know this because when I walked in, my goddamn clothes in one washing machine were still not technically done. They were started within 30 seconds of one another. So there is no way that you were in this laundry room for more than one minute and did not. There's just no way. I say this because... Instead of my clothes being in the first washing machine, they were now located in one of them, you know, washateria baskets that mm -hmm. you push around. And this woman's dirty things were now in the washing machine. So I look at the basket. I look at her. She says something I didn't hear because I had my headphones on. I truly think that was a blessing. Some sort of, oh, I didn't know I the washer. It was one of the washers. I, <laughs> so the clothes were wet. I said, I probably don't need to burn them. I probably don't need to rewash them. 
I don't know if this person washes her hands or anything. I don't know what germs or filth she may have transferred onto my perfectly clean, <sighs> wet laundry. Valid. But I will assume that this dryer can kill it. <laughs> I uh, I truly hope so. Because I, I think the dryer is, I'm going to put it on its highest heat setting, something yeah. I don't normally do. Yeah. And I'm going to add an extra 10 minutes to the dryer cycle because I don't know what the fuck might be living on your hands. So... When I realized it, and, and truly marijuana helped save this woman's life, I know she said something to me. I just ignored her. I closed my former washing machine with her things still in it and then took my clothes out of the other machine. I still put my clothes in the dryer that was right on top of the washer that she colonized away from me because, bitch, I don't care. Like, it was, that was supposed to be my fucking dryer anyway, bitch. Right. And that's not the point. I extend... The amount of time, I know that the dryer automatically defaults to 45 minutes. I extend the amount of time in the dryers and I go set my alarm again and I go back upstairs. I then come back downstairs <laughs> and put another load of laundry into the one remaining washing machine. That's going to be done in 37 minutes. That's fine. Great. I go back upstairs. I come back down again, put those in a dryer. And at this point, her clothes are out of the washing machine and they are also in dryers. So I put my things in the dryer and then I opened her dryers and then I went back upstairs because, bitch, I'll be goddamned. I can understand taking your clothes out of the washing machine, taking somebody's clothes out the washing machine. If that person had actually left them sitting there for a while. But you knew that that wasn't the case. When you walked into the laundry room, both of those washing machines were still locked. You knew that that washing machine had not been stopped for more than 60 seconds at the absolute goddamn most before I got back to that laundry room. Which, just saying, had it been me, I would have thought, oh, that person must be right around here. Yes, because... Because most saying. people don't leave wet clothes in the goddamn washing machine to mildew because it don't take long. I mean, I learned that at like seven years old. <laughs> it don't take long, girl. And I could see, look, I done knocked the whole goddamn mic out. I could see if I was one of them trifling motherfuckers who just let their clothes sit for 10, 20 minutes and, st and still expect people to, yep. to not have their shit. No, I'm not like that. I am punctual about my things because I don't want mildew on my clothes. No one does. And I don't want white people's hands on my clothes. I actually don't want no color person's hands on my clothes. I would have had this exact same reaction if she was black, to be totally honest. Fair. I am going to stop your clothes when they still have 25, 30 minutes left in the dryer. <laughs> I am going to do that. And I'm not going to feel bad. And I hope that you went to sleep and totally forgot about your laundry and thought, oh, it'll be dry. I'll get it in the morning. And when you woke up, you went down to the laundry room and you realized all your shit smelled like milky socks because of me. I could see if I left it sitting there. I could even see if they was in the dryer. I could even see that. Because if I start my laundry and your clothes are in the dryer and then a whole 37 ass minute pass and I come back downstairs and you still ain't got your shit out the dryer after half a goddamn hour, then I will put your stuff in the washeteria basket. But that is reasonable. 37 minutes is a reasonable amount of time. 30 seconds is not how dare that bitch she touched my fucking clothes oh my god no 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 if you are the type of bitch who does this just know you deserve to get your ass beat you saw the goddamn washing machines was locked when you got in there you saw that <clears throat> now, no <laughs> knowing my temperament I may have been like like on a bad day I may have been like now where the hell is this person at you know what I'm saying and then waited the extra 15 seconds for you to show up <laughs> I, I, like, I don't know right that's no. what I'm saying and it's, there was still a free washing machine so she could have just loaded enough clothes for one load and then took and then her ass just, back upstairs but you saw that it was less than a minute left on the fucking machines you didn't even give me that girl like you you literally you waited for the machine to stop and pulled my clothes out I'm put them in the bucket so you could put yours in telling you a vast majority oh, of no. 
a vast majority of the ca- Caucasians on this planet, I believe, are just raised on, oh, just do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh, what, who cares? You know, I don't. I just couldn't believe that. Da- I was so I angry. I witnessed it. I was so angry that my mind immediately went to, how am I going to get this bitch? Oh, I, th- same. Me, I was putting my clothes <laughs> in the dryer like, what am I going to do to this bitch? I have to find something. A little dryer lint in in her clothes, sure. But what what else can be done? Right. And then I thought, how about they just don't get dry? <laughs> and I changed the heat setting from normal to low, so that in case she did manage to shut them and and get it restarted, <laughs> that they would dry at a lower fucking temperature. Yeah, fuck her. And I hope she hears this. Fuck you. You know my clothes wasn't, bitch. You know I didn't leave that shit sitting there. How dare you put your nasty ass hands on my clothes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah fuck you I hope all your little Victoria's Secret thongs got mildew all over them bitch hope all your little juicy sweatpants and shit bitch that was funny to me <laughs> all your sorority t-shirts ruined I sure the fuck hope so try me again bitch let me see you or that bitch who asked to see my key fob again well that's the greatest part it wasn't even the same white woman <laughs> No, it wasn't even the same goddamn white woman. <laughs> I mean, I knew it was. What y'all do? <laughs> well, uh, it was some white people coming to look at an apartment when I left, and I would not hold the door open so they could walk in. Like, <laughs> no, <laughs> why? The super would be down here. No, fuck that. Shit, y'all are ruining the building. <laughs> That's what they say about us. <laughs> I know, but they really are. Like people, black people behave like human beings. I don't have to worry about if a black girl would have did that because if a black girl saw that the washing machines had less than a minute on them, she'd be like, that bitch coming down here. In an all black building, you know that that girl is not going to let her dirty, her wet I'm clothes sorry. sit in the washer. If there's literally another washing machine that's still running on a couple of minutes or seconds at that, it is quite obvious that the person who is washing this clothes, these clothes is going to be here in a second. Right. And to not even give them the grace of a couple of minutes or something like that to be like... Okay, girl, I got shit to do. I don't, anyway. You didn't even have to have the grace of a, of a couple of minutes. Like, you literally, it was seconds. You you sat there waiting for the wa- You didn't even let the washer stop and me show up. Because that would have taken you all of 45 seconds and I would have been there by then. Like, I was literally on an elevator that I own. The only reason I didn't beat your ass to the basement is because you were tying up the goddamn elevator. Oh, I said, nah, fuck her. Her shit not drying tonight. <laughs> Not to fucking night. Fuck her. I'm just I'm sorry. I'm just imagining this wife. Yeah. She said something. She said something. It was I literally did not hear it though. She lucky she didn't get cussed out like her sister. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if she if she would have went down there and thought that Negro bitch. <laughs> or if she, I hope she does. Listen, that black bitch opened my dryers. I sure the fuck did. I sure the fuck did. Come see me about it. Well, all right. That was solid. <laughs> Thank you. That wraps up this week's episode of The Read. Check us out at thisistheread.com. Our social media account is at this is the read on all platforms. Uh, we have a talk show coming out October 11th on So Fuse. we're going to continue. I'm going to this. continue. I feel like the network really wants us to talk about the fact that we have a show with them. Yes. I feel like we kind of should. It's airing in a month, nigga. Like, we have to talk about it. I guess. <laughs> You're a mess. So, yes, on Fuse, it will also be available for purchase on iTunes and Amazon Prime. And if you are not in the U.S., but you do have Amazon Prime, it will be available to you a week after it airs. But it will be free. So I think they said that's like 175 countries. So yeah. if, if there's Amazon Prime in your country, then there's I think there's a good chance, yeah, I guess. There's a great chance that you'll be able to watch the show. Obviously so. more information to come. Yes, more information to come. But yes, October 11th on Fuse. Do you have any news this week, friend? Um, Not at the moment. Um, I feel like I may have had a random anecdote that I forgot all about, but... um. Yeah, have a great weekend and stuff like that and be uh, mm. Oh yeah. Sensible. I'm going to have a great weekend cuz my birthday's on Monday. It is. <laughs> so I am going to have a fantastic weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Plans? I sure do. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's And the it. writers room for the show starts on my birthday, so that will be very fun. 
And yeah, I think that's it. Well, uh, happy Virgo season to all of you girls, I guess. <laughs> and here. Um, we will speak to you guys next week. Bye, y'all.